good evening welcome to another video all right so uh today we're going to be doing our usual earnings review now we do these videos once per quarter it's actually different from our stock review because our stock review will feature one main stock so if you haven't checked that out yet please do check that out after this video today though we're just going to be going through different reports as much as we can go through during the time, maybe an hour, maybe two, maybe three, who knows? We're gonna have some fun, go through, see if you know some of our, our assessments for some of the companies that we had on our watch list at the start of the year are doing well. And just kind of go through the reports, if there's anything interesting to note, talk about some of the impact of some of the things we've heard in the news, see if that would have any impact on the market for the rest of the year. And just kind of talk about the things that you know are interesting to us overall so i'm going to be joined by david rose a little bit later chike verwe may or may not be able to join us depending on how his schedule works out but you know we're just gonna do do what we usually do all right so let us pray we thank you lord for this day we thank you for allowing us to meet like this as a community I pray, Lord, that you will bless this community with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. May we be able to build wealth for our families. And Lord, we, we acknowledge you as the source of all wealth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. All right. Um, Mahalia, unfortunately, uh, we won't be able to touch on that company that you're asking about. So we can't do every one of them, right? So... Um, all right, let me get some, some housekeeping out of the way first. So let me share my screen here. All right, so, so keep them coming in the chat. Let me know which companies you want us to review. As many as you can. Let's see how much we can get through. I'm going to just share a couple of things with you guys before we go. So the very first thing that you want to do, if you haven't done so as yet, is register for our upcoming class. So to, to register for the class, you're going to go to our link tree. So, so it's link tree slash learn, grow, invest. And we have a biblical investing class coming up next weekend. So you can register for it. It's going to you know, speak about, we're going to use the Bible to show us how we can you know, invest manage our money, budget, all of those things, right? So that's going to be a free class next weekend. So check that out. If you have not yet subscribed to our newsletter, type in the email address, subscribe here, and we send out weekly newsletters, you know, to cover different topics on the market. So for last week, we actually touched on what is earning season, and we explained it, um, you know, when the reports come out, how to understand it. We showed an example of Fosterage, for example, for as, as an example, you know, how to understand the financials, all of the things that you'd want to know. So we covered it as a way to help persons to understand uh, what's happening. So, you know, be sure to check that out, what earning season means for you as, as an investor. Then we just made some recommendations here. So that's a part of our newsletter. You can subscribe. The link is in the description of this video. Uh, let me see what else I need to tell you about. Follow us on all social medias, social media platforms. You definitely want to do that. All right, so that's it. Um, okay, and join us on Telegram as well. Definitely want to ask that you do that. Okay, so let's see some of the companies that you're talking about here. And let's see where we start. All right, so you want us to start with Detail, Tropical, and Salada. That's interesting. MIL, all right, let, let, let's see what's, what's going on here. MIL is next. JFP, I'm definitely going to talk about JFP. Um, as I said, Mahalia, un, unfortunately, we can't touch on SVL. Spur tree, I'm interested in that one as well. You know we have to talk about Fesco. Efresh, let's see if we have time. SCI. Honey bun. All right, so cool. We have enough companies that we'll be able to go through as much as we can here. All right, so let's start with this one. All right, let's start with with tropical. All right. So 
So I wanted to ask everyone, actually, let me actually pause this, right? Because I don't want to start into the companies without asking you guys this. So we've seen a little bit of, so some companies have been performing really well, yet their prices are going down. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that uh, some persons are saying, they think that maybe some of those companies were growing in prices before their reports came out. So whatever growth that would have been seen on the report is already priced in. Some persons are confused. They're like, well, I, I bought this company. It's doing well. What's happening? Uh, so what's your what's your take on that? Are you happy with how this earnings season has has gone for your your stock portfolio? Are you concerned? Are you worried? I, I like that by by Camilla. So that's my mindset, right? Camilla says she she doesn't mind. She's gonna buy more. That's how I feel. Uh, so you know, tell me tell me how you feel, how you've been feeling about it. I know our group has been a little. I it's felt weird this week. Not as much talking. Uh, some persons are, I guess, you know, because stocks aren't halting every day. There's not much to talk about. But uh, let me know what you guys think about that. I just wanted to ask that, you know, before we get into things a little bit more, just to, he to hear from you. If you're watching this on a replay, just tell me in the comments below how you've been kind of feeling and navigating this season. Okay. All right. So let's go back to it. Um, okay, cool. I said some more. Some more comments here. Internet Guru says, not concerned. I keep my strategy simple. Good companies that stand the test of time. I love that. Um, post that in the comment, and I'm going to just ask persons to like that, that, that comment. Not worrying, just concerned. What are you concerned about, Orville? What is concerning for you? Tell me about that. Roger says he's loving the discount. I hope you feel that way if it's still remains the same six months from now. And Miles is saying detail is on his watch list. Okay, cool. All right, so I have, I have something to share about detail later on, but not just yet. I need to confirm it first. Okay. All right, so let's look at Tropical, right? So Tropical's report, let me see here. I definitely know what they, they released their report, right? So they're on audited financial for second quarter ended March 31st was May 13th. May 13th. So that would have been about here. So their report came out. But as I said, it's been a little interesting because this was one of the companies that, um, I mean, we haven't gone into the report yet. But off it, just, just my initial overview, they did okay. So, and what we saw from there is that the price kept, you know, it's, it's kind of going down a little bit there. So let's look at the report, see what it says and, and determine whether or not what we think, you know, could be doing better than it's doing right now, All right? And as I said, guys, David Rose is gonna join me at around 7.30, 7.45, you just have to take care of some things first. Yes, there's a Telegram group. Let me actually share that link for you now. As I said, all the links are in our link tree. So let me copy the Telegram group here and I post it in the chat. I'm not quite convinced. So, so, so Stephen is saying it's possibly recession fears. I'm not convinced of that. I don't. I don't think so. I, I think it's not that simple. All right. So let's check this out. Right. All right, so this is the overview. Okay. All right, so for the first six months of the fiscal year, they have grown their net profit by more than 150%, right? Moving from 34.5 million for six months to 86.6 .6 million in the first six months of this year, right? So that's already just really good right there. It's worthy to note that net profit for the entire 12 months last year was $88 million. So right there, 86.6 million for the first six months last year, 
they did 88.8, right? So that, that already tells you a lot. To which we have almost achieved in six months of this fiscal year. Earnings per share for the first six months went from three cents a year ago to seven cents per share. That's definitely a sign of growth. Tropical battery continues to push their diversification strategy. That's selling more than just conventional lead acid batteries, um, i.e. selling lithium ion batteries, selling renewable energy products like solar panels, etc. And this is having a positive impact on your overall business. So wait, how does this work? How, how do you read this? Okay, so I guess you read it down and go back up. It's a little bit weird. All right, so, oh, okay. I think I read over there. Okay, so um, we do our best to enhance your customers' lives by providing them with quality products and services. The more customers they serve, the more impact they have. So they reach over 25,000 customers in this quarter, up from 23,000, right? So, so their customer base is growing. That's what we're seeing there. Approximately 550 of these customers are small and medium enterprise, which earn a significant share of their revenue by selling, by reselling, right? So they have resellers who purchase from them and go and sell in, in maybe, um, you know, auto parts stores, etc. These valued resellers include independently owned gas stations, small auto parts stores, hardware stores, and supermarkets. So that's good to note. We're happy to report that four of our fellow team members listed below were promoted in organization. Okay, great. That's good to see as well. Um, so congratulations to those persons. Good job there. At the end of Q1, FY 2022, they had 123 team members on staff, broken down by gender and age. Okay, that's cool. Um, that's interesting to see that listed. Right, um, but I mean that's good to know as well. Approximately fifty-seven percent of their team members now own shares in Tropical Battery. Now this is interesting to see, right? You always want to see if employees are taking up shares in a company, directors taking up shares in a company. That's definitely going to encourage them to do their best, so that the company will continue to perform well on the stock market. Okay, an achievement they're proud of as it was one of their goals to broaden the ownership of the company through their IPO. They're happy that their team members continue to show this kind of material support as your ownership creates strong alignment. Definitely agree there 100%. Preserving their environment, their spent battery export sales fell to zero, fell to zero tons for the quarter from 175.1 metric tons in Q2 FY 2021. This is interesting to note. This cost us approximately 45 million in lost revenue for the quarter. However, on the positive side, they continue to collect and purchase spent batteries, which will be shipped out and sold later this fiscal year. Okay. The vessel that usually transports their spent battery export ceased its operation in Q1 and no replacement vessel. Okay. All right. That makes some sense now. But their cargo was identified, resulting in no shipments. All right. So what that means, the impact to this, right, 45 million in lost revenue is going to be realized later on in the year, all right? And in speaking about collecting and exporting spent automotive batteries has been as has a positive impact on the local and global environment thanks to the recovery of plastic, lead, and is a practice in the companies that is expanding to include lithium batteries. So I remember us talking about this in the Telegram group um you know being able to 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 save and conserve in that way it is definitely something that i would would um encourage and it's something that i mean just in general the the impact of the things that we're able to recycle that we can recycle is definitely a good thing to note right so to speak about community and giving back there i'm gonna skip over those <laughs> um Let's see here. Okay, financial highlights. All right, so I'm not going to go through these. I'm wanting to see, I'm interested to see outlook. I want to hear what they have to say in terms of outlook. Yes, this is what I want to see. So with our more than adequate levels of inventory, we see a bright second half of this fiscal year ahead. 
We're also still expanding our top selling retail store located on Grove Road, just off half a tree. While, while will allow us to increase sales at this location even further and achieve higher profitability, given that retail margins are better than our wholesale margins while offering greater comfort and convenience for our team members and customers with substantial increase in square footage. They plan to increase their retail presence island-wide in the coming quarters, and they're getting close with their efforts to acquire profitable companies and hope to have at least one of them close by the end of this calendar year. So much to take away from this, right? Um, so they have more than adequate levels of inventory. They are hoping to achieve higher profitability, given that the retail margins are better than the wholesale margins. They plan to increase the retail presence island-wide in the coming quarters. Very important information to see. This is making me feel like, again, so if we look to see what that performance was, even after this report, I think there is some, some opportunity there. Personally, I mean, let's see what happens. We're getting closer in our efforts to acquire profitable companies. So an acquisition is likely to be announced soon. And I hope to have at least one of them close by the end of this calendar year. So lots of things to take away from that. So yeah, this one, yeah. Okay, so let's check this out. This is their balance sheet so they mentioned they have more than adequate inventory and just look at that inventory number i'm hoping that you can see clearly 912 million dollars worth of inventory that's almost double the inventory that they had last year right so they've had more than enough inventory then they don't have to spend any more money to get it um so that's good Cash and cash equivalent, so they've increased their cash position from the same time last year. Um, a little bit less than what the audited uh, showed. Um, current liabilities that have increased. I mean, naturally, inventory increase is likely they're going to have some payables, but this is current, meaning it would be paid within the year. Current portion of long-term loan, 40 million. Current portion of lease liability is 14 million. That's pretty much constant coming from last year. Intangibles, same. Property, plant, and equipment, small, small decrease, less than 10%. Right to use assets, employee benefits. Um, interest in joint venture, that's 5 million. That's item 5E, so I'm going to check that out. Lease liabilities, long term loans would have increased by a hundred and hundred and change in terms of million. Um, this is a six months, right? So I want to check, maybe we'll look at their annual report if we have time, so what they would have started here with. Um, let's see here, this is the one I want to see, right? So I'm gonna look at the six months. I'm gonna focus on that one compared to where it was the year before. So they would have grown in the six for, for the first six months of this financial year. This looks like to be about 30%, almost 40% increase in revenues. Cost of goods sold would have been, see, I need to calculate these margins. Let me see if I can just do a quick calculation here. All right, doing, we're looking at tropical battery. All right. So I'm doing some quick calculation here to say what, so that's about 70% cost of goods sold there. Um, wait, minus 909, 388, divided by 1297. So that's about 30% profit. That made so I mean uh, a little bit more there. I mean, let's see what the rest of it looks like. Admin expenses slightly higher. Operating profit that's definitely good to see there. One hundred and thirty-three million as opposed to seventy. And I would have covered these in the financial highlights. I just because we're going to go through so many companies, I didn't want to touch on it now. Um, 
profit before depreciation, net financial costs, and taxation. That's 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 pretty good there. 139 million as opposed to 75 for the first six months last year. And let's see what net profit looks like. Finance income, more or less the same there. Net finance costs, profit before taxation. All right, so that's that's definitely impressive. All right. So we saw it said earlier in the highlights, 86 million as opposed to 34 million. That is impressive, right? So earnings per share would have doubled, right? That is really, really good. All right, let's look at their cash flow. See if there's anything that we need to be made aware of here. Oh, wow, David, I didn't send you the link. Hold on. I'm gonna say I'm gonna stop sharing for a sec, guys. Pardon me. Don't want you to say. Um, all right, David. I'm gonna send you on WhatsApp. All right. So everyone, while we take this short break, please remember to like the video. Uh, let us know in the comments in the chat which video you'd like us to review. We're gonna go through as much as we can. So let us know the company that you're interested in and we'll see as much as we can go through during that time. And yeah, let us know what you'd want us to talk about as well, right? Because once, once David and I are here, we really could end up talking about anything. All right, David, I send you the link. So let me know when you can jump on. And that reminds me, let me send Chica the link as well. Can't believe I forgot to do that. <laughs> I, I am running a, a large monitor, Craig. It's a 32 inch monitor. Um, so what, what makes you think it's really large? So I have one big monitor right here, and then I have a laptop here. I am hoping to get another monitor. See if I can convince my wife to allow me to do that. All right, David should be joining us any moment now. So let's go back to what we're looking at. So I really like that report that, that I saw from Tropical. That is really good. It's really good, really good. I, man, that's, that's a really good report. So, I mean, the company is already on my watch list. If it wasn't, it would be after that report. Definitely can't lie there. All right, let's see. Um, Tropical. I want to check what they're currently trading as. Putting my faith in this. Um, so, PE is currently 25, 12 month projected PE 19. And it closed today at 271, right? I'm not gonna throw around the word undervalued here. That's that's not my style, but that's definitely interesting to see. That's 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 all I can say. All right. So let's go back to this for a little bit. So wait, let's let's look at the cash flow statement for tropical battery. Let me just um just type that. That person who joined can see what we're doing. Let me just take off my video, focus on that. All right, so um, cash for the period, as we know, they would have um, come in with more profit. Uh, depreciation would have been 31. Um, yeah, Orville, I'm, I'm actually gonna check that, right? I'm gonna check the average PE as well. See what we can get from there. But I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Interest on lease liabilities, amortization, um, accounts receivable. Um, I mean, grew slightly by about 12, 11% there. Inventory, 304 million there. Payables, 189 million. Um, cash user generated by operations would have been negative 
56 million there. Interest pay, taxation pay, so net cash would be um, negative 71 million there uh, from, from operating activities, as in cash going out. Uh, let's see here, purchase of property, plant and equipment, spend 20 million there. I think we may be able to see some, some notes on that, or David, I'm sure, can shed light on that when he joins. And um, payment of dividends. I didn't even, I wasn't even aware to pay the dividend. I have to check that out. Let me see. I pay dividends. Pay the dividends of two cents, all right? Um, two cents. Definitely could be better. How many shares outstanding? 1.3 billion shares outstanding okay all right um let me see here so overall um cash cash equivalents for the period 143 million as opposed to 90 million for the same period last year okay Payment long term loan. I'm just kind of going through again here. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to scroll through the rest of these here and I'm going to wait for David to share his thoughts before we move on. So they mentioned an increase in inventory. Let's actually check this out here. Receivables and payments there. Other receivables, related parties. Um, so inventory, we saw that went up again, that, that, that I mentioned bonded warehouse inventories. That's a scrap battery. So this is what they would have noted. David, you ready to go? Hey man. Thanks everybody. Hey man. How you been? Yeah. So I'm just looking through your, you know, presentation and you know, right now, as this inventory is king, because of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Noticing the same thing as well. And so I was going please... to point out while you're scrolling down a little quickly, uh, mm -hmm. innervate note B. So the fact that, no, you skipped, I said innervate. Yeah, I yeah, right. So what I was saying was, you know, the fact that you see it says, you know, it's interest free and no fixed repayment term. It's kind of telling you that earner you know, is kind of, uh, is it ready to start operations? So for context, CAC and Tropical Battery put in $5 million each into earner I think it'll mm -hmm. be between 24 to $36 million you're looking to raise the additional capital just to push earner forward. So to see $5 million right there as a rated party balance, you know, it's a good step forward. Okay. All right. Thank you for that context, David. Um, so they mentioned in their report, let me actually go back to it because I'm interested to see if you have any insight. So they mentioned a couple of things here, right? So they mentioned um, increasing the retail presence island-wide. You know anything about that? I think that's really talking about, you know, just improving their reach across the country because mm -hmm. all the physical location will be nice and pretty. It comes with additional cost to set up a fixed location. So, you know, it's more likely them looking to partner with other gas stations to push their batteries. Yeah. So for example, I actually passed by a gas station recently. I can't which one. And what I saw was tropical batteries. I think it was in the old groups in Africa tree. Mm -hmm. right CB. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And you know, I think about the fact that if you can get a partnership like a FESCO, when you hear that partnership, we hear that partnership, you know, both tax cover will fly. But listen, I would love to hear that. Yeah, but the thing is, it's a good thing to hear you know looking to expand their retail presence, which can indicate that they you know they're focusing more on the B2B side, business to business, so sell to the gas station, the gas station sell to the consumer. So the fact that they're still looking to, you know, don't a little bit more and go from business to consumer, it's a good look because as an under market that they can tap into and build further relationships with. Agreed. Because Agreed. right now, in the day, 
a reverse back out on the road and you need a couple things, you need gas, you need a battery, you need to maintain your car, you know? Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah man, yeah man, I'm hearing, yeah man, I'm hearing. I'm just checking to see if um any comments, any messages. Oh, so I was gonna say I'm I wanted to before I get into another companies, I wanted to explain to persons, you know, what the issue with JP's financials were. Okay, so, so why not why not just have us finish tropical and then just, just go no, straight that's to the I was saying, I after we've done this, I can show people because I'm actually gonna show you Fisco to explain what the big issue is. Okay, so you want to share? Yep, you want to just no, no, that's as yet. Finish, let's finish Tropical Battery first. You're finished. All right. And they also mentioned here um, your efforts to acquire profitable companies. Um, any any insights on that one? No, I wish I could offer some insight there, but uh, can't really help there. Because wish you can, meaning you can't share yet? or No, no, I, I, I'm not aware. That's just it. Okay, okay, okay. Got you. No, but because. It did, say, it, it did say by the end of this calendar year, so I figure we'll hear something soon. Well, we're already in, in May, so. Yeah, so we're we're pretty much at half year, so. Exactly, but, but you know. Soon. I was just going to point out was that, you know, in all honesty, it's a good look to see that, you know, these companies which were basically constrained by COVID in the last two years exactly. are looking to, you know, good operations in this kind of relatively open environment. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, looking at gross operating revenue, I like when companies give you a breakdown, so that's good. Um, net battery sales, net tire sales, total accessories, net sales before discounts and then discounts on all products. Um, so that would be a breakdown of their, their revenue. So battery sales pretty much accounts for a big chunk of everything. And then tire sales is just nine million, huh? That's what it's always been for them. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely some opportunity there. And even, I mean, accessories are pretty good actually. Um, batteries is like significant compared to everything else. But to me, when a number is small like this, it just means that there are opportunities to grow. So we can watch and see how, how that grows over time. Uh, Long-term loans here. Um, so taxation there, that, so they're on the junior market, which here, where they listed? 2020. Okay, all right, so I'll pull it for time. Three more yeah. years. All right, top I 10. I know I did not in my spreadsheet that actually outlined where you know a couple companies will be losing their tax break is it this year? Yeah, yeah. All right, top ten here. Um I don't see anybody I know. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> That's an inside joke, guys. Um something we joke about in the group all the time. No, that's it's a it's a good thing, you know, because in the day we want I want to see all our colleagues thriving exactly. and striving. Exactly. exactly. Agreed. All right, not seeing anything else that we want to look at there. As I did mention, they had uh no recent news that would be so their AGM would have been earlier this year. You went to their AGM did? Tropical battery? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wrote an article on it. Okay. Name of it. Anything um, that we need to say? No, like okay. you want a company trying to rush the way of a, of a AGM? Mm -hmm. Same it. Okay, okay. Yeah, but my customer off again next year still. We try to do that again, but <laughs> oh, do okay. not try on a rush versus of an AGM. Because although I can actually find a way to get in contact with you. Not everybody has contact means with the, with the company. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, man. So we saw earlier this year, this company was trading at $1.21. And from about February. First quarter report. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So it went from 121 to a peak of $2.46. And then from there, it I knew it went over three dollars definitely this year. I mean, it's a candlestick, candlestick chart. Candlestick chart. 
Yeah, that can actually help you to realize where the peak was, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. So 322 was the peak on May 11th. And as right. I said, the report came out on May 13th. And then... Instead, oh, yeah. Yeah, man, May 13th. So instead of going any further, we saw pretty much, um, you know, some persons seemingly exiting their positions. Um, but my theory, David, and we, we kind of saw this across the market. So... I don't think it says anything about tropical, but a lot of companies we saw them not necessarily perform the way persons expect. You know, I was saying earlier that for a lot of persons, they were thinking that maybe it was already priced in for some of these companies. But to me, um, you know, for a company like tropical, especially that second report, I mean, that's, and, and based on where the PE is currently, I don't, I wouldn't agree that it would be priced in for a company like Tropical, at least. I was going to say that, you know, if you say companies are priced in, I was going to ask them, what do you mean? Because that's I mean, always my question as well. We're a different environment, you know, honesty, because the DRMA is removed, COVID is still here, but we don't care, and people get back on their lives, so... No, but it's yeah. the truth, I mean. it's the truth, like... I heard that Wave 5 is here, right? Yeah, but... Until the country starts seeing everybody like flies, condolences to the teachers, uh, you know, you won't see any serious reaction. And even then, the government probably might just... Teachers in eight days, I don't know how much serious you want to get. No, but the thing is, the government still might just say, hey, put on your mask, we're needed. We're putting our, back in a mask mandate and go on with your lives because the reality is we cannot afford that uh, economic slowdown mm -hmm. via right. government action in this time. High level of inflation, Expensive financing, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Why would you even stop wearing a mask in the first place? I don't I don't get it. All right, no, uh, go ahead and, and explain JFP for us, David. Uh, I, I have to share my screen. Yep, yeah. all right. I don't see it yet. No, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Uh, Guys, please like the video. It really, really helps us. Share the video, like the video. Can you see my screen, yeah, Jeremy? Yeah, man. Sharing now. Oh, uh, yeah, wait for this to come up. So, first, you're actually asking me, when I give a basic breakdown of the issue, first, we're kind of still confused. So, let me break it down. So, first thing you should key note it says prospectus and offer for sale. When the message of offer for sale is kind of speaking to, in this case, a company, or sorry, existing shareholders selling their shares in the company. You understand? Yep. So that's really just it. I think I mentioned that when we're doing the prospectus review. And it, as you can see right here, it says 280 million ordinary shares, of which 140 million are newly issued shares for subscription, but another 140 million are existing shares of the selling shareholder for sale at $1. So in that case, you understand that the company is only raised one hundred and forty million dollars, and the shilling shareholder, shilling shareholders, got another one hundred and forty million dollars, and it's even highlighted right here, right? So I was wondering why the hell was, what was I talking about on Twitter, and hoping that I could get a more broken down explanation. I'm gonna show you Fesco. So as you can see, two hundred eighty million dollars right here. This is incorrect for people, right? I can zoom in further so you can see clearly. $280 million right here, shouldn't be here. So Fesco had a sale, offer for sale and a prospectus offer, whereby 300 million shares were newly issued at 80 cents, but 200 million shares are being sold by the existing shareholders at 80 cents each. So in this case, although the offer itself was capitalized at $400 million, only $240 million was going to Fesco before fees, you know? And even highlight it to be sold by shareholders to be issued. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to just go through Fesco's maybe the whole and who are the selling shareholders and which were, you know, existing. These the director, directors and founders. When it came on, as you can see right here, Fesco's most recent quarterly report, which is their fourth quarter report, they show you right here that the net issuance amount 
after the tra tra transaction cost was $223.53 million. It wasn't $400 million, you understand? Yeah. And as you can see, when you go into cash flow, you see the same amount affected right here. So you, you never saw a big $400 on the, on the cash flow statement, and then you said enough $140 million removed or whatever. No. So in a public offer, the money goes to the broker. Broker holds it in trust, and after that, they give the capital to the company as decided after paying fees and everything else, right? JFE's financials right here showed $280 million as the amount of capital added while having another 140 million shares issued right here. So what this does, you actually have a $140 million over statement with respect to the balance sheet. So PNL, this is fine for the moment. There's some other errors I'm gonna point out, but when it comes down to the capital issue, that's the big issue when it comes down to JFP. So it's always it's about $140 million. So this cash balance right here is over to the $140 million. I think you see that out. The company is only left at about $6 million, which is kind of insane. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And when you look at the balance sheet now, I'm going to just put my calculator so you can see what the total assets are. So we'll add back the amount subtracted. Oh, I was gonna add back up the shareholder balance. Shareholders equity plus total liabilities. Is this because I don't want to try and confuse anybody? I want everybody to understand. I mean, this one hundred fifty million dollars right here. I hope everybody is able to follow. And if you're seeing and you don't understand us, let us know in the chat. And I'm sure they will be happy assets. to. Assets are, are actually stated as six hundred and one point six nine million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. But when you subtract one hundred forty million dollars, which is an overstatement. Oops. I'm just <laughs> All right. One more zero. This is the actual capital balance. Personal assets, basically. You understand? $461 million. Which is much higher than the million dollars that, that is basically being added up under the current presentation. You understand? Yeah. So instead of we have $146 million in cash, it's only six million dollars. Instead of having a larger balance sheet, it's just around four hundred million dollars. You understand? And even that's an issue is because you do your analysis right here, saying all right, I'm going to discuss, discuss it cash flow analysis, this and that, you know, all that good stuff. And then you're like, wait, something wrong because it's about the cash flow statement to point to some point to the big issue. Mm -hmm. They had a one hundred and fifty million dollar. Uh, Cash flow, no, sorry, one hundred nine million dollar cash flow from cash outflow from operations, right? Yeah. And it was they they closed up their GK capital account and their IPO. Why they didn't have a negative cash balance right here? You understand? Yeah, yeah. And the reason, the big reason for that increase in the or actually the decrease in cash, a big increase in the cash outflow from operations is because they gave this amount out. In terms of related parties, and as we can see in the balance sheet, the company paid down the thirty-two million dollars in a related party balance, which is a cash outflow, cash liability, and they then gave some a related party another seventy-nine million dollars, which way it's one hundred eleven million dollars. You understand? Okay. That's why left. That's why it left. And they have to call it later on in the future. You understand? So. JFP starts in the so, so JFP starts in this quarter when you know a lot less capital. So all they're going to be getting these projects and deals coming forward to them 
and they should be closing as shortly as they should. It's yeah, kind of yeah, and that's one of the things I mentioned where, you know, well, well one of the things we said on the, on, on the prospectus review is that we expect that cash is going to be coming in like on an ad hoc basis based on when they close out their projects, et cetera. I mean, the word they use is lumpy, right? Not, not, not my choice of words, but theirs. Yeah. So, yeah. Right, and, sure. and, and, and the funny thing about C Germain, also oh, people asking about weeks and paying dividends in the in the chat. They last paid dividends back in December and they paid in 2020 as well. So that's uh, something you can check out for check their all these financials if you want. But yeah, so you know, JFP having a much weaker balance start the quarter. It's basically the same amount as March 2021. 20, isn't a good look in my eyes, you know, honestly, if I get what I'm saying, you know? Yeah, yeah. But this net increase should be a decrease of about $2 million, about $1.91 million decrease, basically. You understand? So that is why it's a big issue for me, because as an investor, you want to use the best, you want to use accurate financials at the same time, you want to know where a company actually sits, to actually gauge their potential. Because yeah. JFP, all JFP has to do is you know, use their inventory to make the furniture. They still need cash to pay, for the, pay the bills to the staff and see, well, pay staff salaries and pay for the bills. You get what yeah. I'm saying? You understand? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Standard. standard. You can see the, the payables went up by $35 million since December. So, you know, you actually kind of find that very concerning with only $6 million, $6 million worth of cash. So, but the money they do they do get from their clients is gonna pay bills. Yeah. Well what does what does it potentially mean for them though? So they're gonna to have to restate their financials because I reported them because yeah. I don't stand for that foolishness. Yeah, man, I get I get that part, but on the business side, what does that mean for them, right? Because if they're running low on cash, they then... the to find other forms of financing, that's just really it. That's... Because yeah. we're not paying taxes to the government right now, but at the same time. Yeah, bills to pay because for those who don't know, payables means paid, payable within, within year. one year. Yes. And the thing is, we do know much of this payable balance is actually an accrual, meaning, for example, you have to pay your staff and you have you accrue yeah. the balance yeah. in the period and pay your staff after. Yeah, because I mean, usually these things like the ongoing salaries and those things aren't listed here, right? Exactly. You you only record them as an expense when they're paid up, but yeah. I'm talking about a payable because it's a liability. Yeah. And you know, you saw the big, I said it's increasing receivables, which is good, which means yeah. that you know, they're doing business for clients and they're supposed to get paid later on. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if they were to get, let's say, I mean, half of that capital in the next quarter, four to five million, that can definitely help. Yeah, um, but, this, but this isn't a great spot because for some companies, you want them to, it is a JFP. Based on their initial operations, and so you want them to have uh, oodles, oodles of cash at the same time. But yeah. again, well, again, to me, David, they, they've kind of spelled this out for us. They use the word lumpy. No, I agree. Mm -hmm. But that is why I say you don't want them to have an old lot of cash on, on hand because that doesn't make any sense at the same time. There should be enough cash on hand to cover any emerging risk. Any risk that yeah. kind of emerge, you understand? Yeah. And I know also, that we joke about it, but lumpy kind of tells you that, I mean, what, what we're seeing now is prone to happen. So they, they may have high receivables now, one quarter they may have a lot of cash, then the next quarter no cash again. That's what essentially what lumpy means. And how are they going to pay dividends? That should be a question. You understand? How are they going to pay dividends? Mm -hmm. And other areas of the ticket in the financials were, was, you know, the authorized is not 1.12 billion shares, it's 10 billion shares. Where did I get that from? The company's prospectus. And you know, I look at the EPS calculation, I'm like, this is kind of weird. Why? Because in the case of JFP, they never expected that stock split in their financials. Because as we can see right, we only see 980 dollars increasing share capital and this amount in issued shares so we don't know and the notes don't mean any expounding details right here 
And for those who, and and that's and it's just, yeah, you got to say in German? Yeah, man, I get you, I get you. Yeah, so that is where you know, in this case, the EPS right here is really overstated because I tell to Wigton, for example, where Wigton actually and John decided to call him out. I spoke to John for obvious reasons, but he had to call him out and say, Hey, he didn't issue any shares. You need to just restate the EPS, in this case, the number of shares for comparative purposes. So this EPS probably needs to be adjusted as well. Okay. And, you know, and the thing is, if you're presenting a comparative side by side system for EPS, then the number of shares, as it, since this is representing the current period, 2022, 2021 amount should be accurate as well because this amount they listed right here is the amount they used to calculate the audit financial EPS at the end of the financial year, which was 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see where all these different errors are compounding on each other. Ah, boy, David. And you know, it's kind of sad that the same time I can't really cost because. Reality well, I mean, you, you, you point it out. They'll, um, of course, have to, to to restate, and we've seen worse on the market, right? So, and I won't call any names there. No, and the thing is that, you know, I had to also contact another company during the week and tell them, you know, hey your financials needed to be corrected. If you know a certain character, was, was a Nickelodeon, was a dog, not Clifford, you know which company I'm kind of speaking about. And Jehoan, break it down. <laughs> the man <laughs> said they get $280 million, but they only got $140 million. So the balance sheet is always by $140 million. The man $140 million worth, less worth of cash yeah man and, but that's, a short version. that's a short version but we said this in the group he should have seen that in the group as well and someone asked about jfg share price somebody actually said them them them, them ticked off that actually <laughs> break down the whole jfp foolish on twitter and you said the price start going down people taking the profits but at the same time you don't want to read bad financials saying so, you know, the jfp closed on monday at one dollar seventy and it's come down to around 150 now yeah well, I, I, I'm noticing here though. Am I wrong? Weren't weren't they listed in like it was March they listed? Yeah, March 14th, the day oh. before Eddie Foker. Day before Eddie Foker. Okay. okay. I know you can see Fesco right here. And that is why I respect at least I respect Fesco because they at least have the breakdown in their quarterly report of the expenses. And they actually know to use out of well, Fesco right now. Well, I want to leave Fesco alone. No, but they at least I know they have proper accountants. Leave, leave and yes. this is like everybody you know if you have mm -hmm. issues or say issues or it's a company request to the jsc's regulatory market outside division because yeah. you know the company will be required to restate it because all these errors are not material it does impact analysis of your presentation impact analysis of you as a company so it should actually yeah. So the company right. to look at no a spur tree in the yeah, that, that's what I was gonna mention. Signos. Yeah. So for the person asking about Signos, uh cheesy gully side, uh Signos's quarterly report is late, and the reason why is because yes. they acquired a company in Puerto Rico called Accrescent Financial Corporation. And of course, what? so for extreme explanation sake, they have to consolidate the company's financials, meaning their financials and throw it on the signals his own financials, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, to consolidate is not an easy process, you understand? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's why they're saying you know they're going to submit by the end of the month. And they know David looking out for their financials, so they won't be sure they report it properly, right? <laughs> no, but the thing is that uh signals uh, is in the corporate thing, it's taking longer than expected to complete the consolidation, so you know. If they don't finish up their side on the signals credit investment side of here in Jamaica, wherever their portfolio, but when it comes down to added accuracy, they have other work, they have more work to do because they remember mm -hmm. accounting, you know, using GAAP, general accounting principles versus IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards. So, signals is kind of, you know, you have to wait a little bit on signals to the mountain. And the thing is that Signos' financials won't be out until well, the audit year ends on June 30. So as the Q3 comes out, end of yeah. financial year. 
and okay. for those and for Raniel asking about Lasco Manufacturing, uh, Lasco Manufacturing, Lasco Distributor, Lasco Financial Services, their audit financials are all due at the end of May. So we can go through the Q2, sorry, the Q3 numbers if you want, but otherwise we can't go through the Lasco Financials right now at the moment. Now let's 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 wait for that one. So I wanted to look at Spur Tree. Sure, you can go through the report. Um, they're not they're not in the EPS calculation as well, but okay. they're, they're, new, they're a new company and they're gonna kill them for EPS calculation errors. That's a standard thing at this point in the JSC. They mm-hmm. Q1, German, unedited Q1. We can look at the audit after to actually look at the value they paid for the, the exotic products. I'm still trying to figure out my way around this JSC site, man. You're learning, you're learning. All right. Um, okay. Just checking to see if I know about those. All right. So you can zoom in so persons can see. So the average with the company, we're giving a, a simple financial highlight and breakdown. So you, as you open the report, you know, you understand what you already see. You have exactly. to be in. Is in your calculator or in your calculations? No, it's already in front of you. Yeah. And, you know, it's a 40% year over year increase in revenue. And the thing is that, which is why, you know, I also like, would like my insurance companies going forward to speak about it, is if they had increased volumes. And the reason why I, I say would, that, I would love, I would love to see a breakdown of revenue for every company. I think it would help us to understand you know, which segments are doing well, which products are doing well, how many customers you have. No, so the thing is, they don't want to, so the uh-huh. thing is, I kind of why they want to break it down to that extent you're asking for, but in terms of competitive nature, but to at least break down the revenue, or, you know, in the case of a manufacturing company, so in case of Fisco, right? Yeah. If you say, you know, it's not because of the of gas prices going up, why the revenue went up. Of course it was, because as the margins, as the gas prices were increasing, they put the margin which I'm giving them onto the price, which is that the revenue went up so much, 260%, percent along, alongside you know, the company just having the beach wood and Mandela Highway gas station. So that is why, you know, I said in the case of Fesco, a Fesco spur tree, it'd be appreciative that it could actually break down and say, hey, if we sold more volumes, because remember, they do 95% of their business in exports. So they get to pay in US dollars, right? Yeah. Versus GMD. And I remember on last year on this time, dollar was at around one forty two in Q one twenty twenty one, and it's around one fifty five at the end of Q one twenty twenty two. So, you know that is why I, thought I spoke about that because the time of difference is of when they recognize revenue and at what rate kind of impacted you know that performance of revenue. Yeah, yeah. So that is why you know I said, Nick's manufacturing companies it's good like an Western because you know our exports increased by this amount, and you know it kind of gives you some context. Because you can at least, you know, do some math with the FX rates to understand, you know, was the increased revenues or, you know, or yeah, so that's yeah, the thing about right. it. companies. Yeah. It's in companies you actually want to see it in details. You can actually engage as what's actually going on. But then you get This is a good improvement. The gross margins also went up for spare tree. I can't remember the exact number right now. And for those as much as the gross margin, it's really the gross profit divided by the revenue. And why that matters is because that's the amount of profit you have left behind after you account for the cost to generate the actual revenue amount, right? Yeah. So your raw material, your factory costs, your staff cost with the production of the goods. That is why, you know, you want your cost of sales to be, like I said, the gross margin to be relatively high. And in your manufacturing sector, you see most quality companies being between 35 to 40% in that range of gross profit margin and I, you know for example like like uh, separate right the revenue went by this large number like 10 15 percent but you got a gross profit it was flat which right. the company. And, and 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 that's the thing so what what i what i like to look at is and 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 this is not saying this is what spur tree is doing but i was looking at another report the other day and just note when something shows a percentage growth, depending on what that number is, sometimes it can appear to be more impressive than it actually is, depending on what that original number was. 
I'm not going to call a company name, right? But just bear in mind, right? So, so when you see something maybe grow by 200%, if it was 1 million and it grows to 3 million, that's 200% growth. So sometimes you want to take those things into consideration when you're looking at, um, you know, uh, look, looking at those things, right? So just, just bear that in mind, all right? And you know, that is why you know I mentioned that because then it can separate. But you notice that the gross profit was flat, the revenue was spiked. You could see that they lost a lot of mar a lot of their margins due to price increases, supply chain costs, and so forth. And the thing is, not every company can easily throw a price increase to their customers, depending on what type of customers they are, because that in itself can cause the company to lose a whole lot of you know, potential customers and potentially lose sales. So you know it's a, it's a very delicate balance. Yeah. And, you know, Derby, Con Derby Con County, after you speak out your point about spiritually being slept on by many persons, I you know it's in interesting you mentioned that because spiritually does mean your exports. They, you know, 90% of their revenue is exports. So there is an opportunity for them to further grow their space in the domestic market, mm -hmm. you know, Takila Walker, mm -hmm. which is partially owned by Panjam. And, you know other spice makers such as Grace King, for example, in context. So you know they have a lot of space in the domestic market to also compete. So, so the thing is that because they built up such a strong export base, they have a lot of diversification in terms of revenue. They're not concentrated in terms of one country. You understand? So I think I like about companies having this export. This good. The, their risk is relatively de decreased, and on top of that, we're getting the US dollars, and if they're putting JMD. They reporting the reporting amount is gonna look much more substantial, you understand? Which is pretty funny for those who look at profit all the time. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely, I definitely see see opportunities for companies like them, um, like Fesco. There's another one as well, right? Any company that you see has maybe a, a small base in Jamaica, but they're global, then there's definitely great opportunity, right? Yeah. Correct. Amen. Well, the audited financials will be there. Well, this is the first quarterly report that has been published and since acquisition. Amen. Yes, we're alone. Yeah, man. I was gonna say like, let's go through it because we haven't commented really on it. <laughs> no, but the reason why to read those things up is because we have to understand the quality of earnings, is not just a, not just the yeah, but I don't say I'm all, you're right, you're right, you're right. Definitely worth speaking on. Let's go on, let's go on. So is, yeah, this I want to make a note of what the second, the second sentence in that, in that first paragraph. Mm -hmm. All right. And the reason so why- products from Jamaica. Generated revenue of 73.25 million for the quarter. So then that 73 comes out of this, right? Oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's continuing first. Okay. All right. Um, 71.06 million of this amount was sold to Spur Tree Spices and hence only 2.1. Okay. Yes, that is why I said. Oh, oh, okay. The yeah. strong performance of revenue growth continues to demonstrate the company's push. So, so explain this to, to me, David. Um, I'll explain it like you're five. All right. So, <laughs> so Spiritry is the parent company, right? They are uh -huh. quite a subsidiary. And they have to do something called consolidation of financials, meaning they have to add their financials and their subsidiary financials together to give what you are presented with in front mm -hmm. of you when you read your quarterly financials, right? And the thing is, what happens is that when you, when you consolidate the financials, you have to eliminate intercompany transactions. What does that mean? So in the case of- English. No, I'm making it down, I'm making it down still. So in the case of uh, Interstate Products Jamaica and Spiritry, right? Uh, Exotic products is $71.06 million would have been mm -hmm. removed from the consolidated, consolidated revenue 
And as you can see, they mentioned the two point one eight million dollars. As so that basically, you know, come from external parties. So okay. you know, but I'm thinking what happened is, you know, is that yeah, it's this is spiritual lower in Smith. So what they're thinking is that spiritual, you know, bought the products from exotic exotic uh, products to give them some cash, and then they then sold that amount at a markup to, to other parties. Okay. okay. You get what I say? You get what I say? No, Jermaine. I, I All right. So, so the thing is, I spiritually buy from my subsidiary, right? Mm -hmm. No, but I no, but it's the same products as it's the markup, which means the overall group of the comp group of companies. In this case, two companies still come out there positive. Yeah, man. I get, I get that part. You know, I'm just wondering. So, is, hmm. so what I thought would have happened if if they did the 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 acquisition was that if if exotic did 73 that 73 would be added to what spiritry did since they now own the company right it it's it's an acquisition so your revenues become my revenues your profit becomes my profit yeah and and it's same same you know expenses are shared etc so it's one it's reported as one so like some companies would show the company then the group i was expecting to see a breakdown of exotic breakdown of spiritry then to them, I've just seen it. I've seen the first the notes later in the further notes, but they break it down again, guys. So, when it comes <laughs> on to you know, spiritual and exotic products, right? What happened was that exotic products sold 71.06 million dollars worth of goods to spiritual, and they also 2.18 million to external parties, right? Because they have to calculate the financials for presentation purposes, they had to subtract that seven to a million dollars from the overall calculated revenue. If you get what I'm saying, I'll give me to come in. You can continue in the meantime. Camera okay, name, I got you. All right, David has to step away for a sec. So we're we're gonna wait for David to come back and explain because the way that I said it just now was my understanding of it but i mean david is going to explain again what he was saying so let's wait for him to say that so let's go through in the meantime so the strong performance in revenue in growth continues to demonstrate the company's push to expand its reach right so um that's that's something that they're committed to do so despite significant cost challenges um let's see here we continue to capitalize on 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 economies of scale provided by the growth in our top line in leveraging better input costs. So the cost for sales this quarter is 62%, which is significant improvement on 70, so they're able to, to see better um, gross profit there. Let's see here. You know, I always want to go straight to the outlook because we looked at these already, looked at the numbers already. So I want to see outlook. That's where I want to go. Um, yeah, man, yeah, man, we're definitely going to explain again because I understood it one way. So, you know, David and I are going to talk about that again. So that is what I'm thinking, um, Lowlin. So that's that's what I'm anticipating. And that that's what I was going to ask, David. All right. So the company is working on several strategic priorities focused on growing revenue and containing costs. They expect to realize the full financial benefits of most of these initiatives sometime in the third quarter and beyond. So that's two quarters from now. This is the first quarter. So these are the kind of things you look at. And if, if companies are, are saying they're, they're expecting to realize these initiatives, full financial benefits, then you want to, you know, um, these initiatives include the expansion of production capacity um, to meet increased demand. That's something that you want to see. The introduction of new items on a respiratory brand. And uh, they've also begun work to expand their footprint in the local market, with special emphasis on the food service segment. That's interesting. As we look forward in the coming months, we will continue to prioritize this initiative, not only as an important element of our revenue growth, but risk, miti risk mitigation, All right? Um, okay, cool. So I'd be looking out for Q3. That's 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 what that tells me. All right. Um, 
So revenue, we saw the highlights of that already. So I think we can scroll past here. All right, so David said there was something wrong with the EPS. So I'll wait for him to comment on that as well. But we see the difference in, in net profit. Um, so what I, I think I'd want to pause with Spurtree until I, and, and until I understand that, that consolidation bit. So I'm just gonna go to another company for now, all right? That's what I'm saying, Derby. So Spurtree is now, now considered the, the parent company in my opinion. So let's see. Let's see what, what comes up soon. So let's look at the other things for Spurtree in the meantime. Um, so Spurtree last traded, well, it ended today at 389. I believe it went as high as, well, David said use a candlestick chart here, right? So as high as 445. That was April 28th. So that would be its, its all time high, 445. And it ended the day at 385. So it's it's definitely down since that. Um, highest is 450. So I mean, IPO holders are still happy there. Okay, all right, cool. I'm back, Jeremy. And so what I was going to say was that on the day Spirit Trees Financials came out, the first quarter, persons cleared out that $4 order of 10 million units. I was like, yo, that was going away so fast. People are just chomping it down. And you know, I was also going to point out that when it came on to the explanation earlier for Derby counties, so let me, let me go, Jeremy, scroll down to the segment the segment breakdown here. Scroll down. That probably will make it easier to explain. Yeah, right there. So to break it down, right? Spices is spur tree, right? And can products is exactly the products you make, all right? So, under normal circumstances, we'd have said that Spiritree's Spirit revenue was $234 million, and yeah. their uh, subsidiary, whatever, is $73 million in sales. But when you consolidate financials, meaning create one set of financials to present to you, so for example, NCB Financial Group, right? NCB Financial Group is a company by itself, and you also have NCB Financial Group, which includes the subsidiaries. And what mm -hmm. you see each quarter is the consolidation of all those subsidiaries. So that's all it is. Consolidation only means that you add up all your subsidiaries' revenues, and you subtract transactions between the, the, comp the, as the subsidiaries or related companies. So in this case, it, uh, this intersegmental revenue that is because in this case, spirit tree spices would have bought from uh would have would have bought from exotic products. But the thing is, this and it's between seven to a million dollars. But the thing is, because of how you have to present your financials, that's why they had to basically subtract this amount for the consolidation purposes. You understand? Yeah. And the thing is, as you can see. It subsidiated one point one six million dollars in semi profits, which isn't too bad. But the thing is that it kind of tells me that the subsidiary they purchased, probably has a lot of work to do, and we need to just look out for it because if JP can actually get it to the scale they want it, you know, you potentially do a lot of good things for the revenue and in turn profits. Okay, so and, the know, question I hope I can explain it that for you, Herbie yes. County, and yes, so. When you, when you so can you write, can you highlight a comment at eight sixteen Germain about the parent company that you can so for it? Can you highlight it? That one. So yeah. So yeah, the revenue counts as one, but the thing is, you have to subtract any expenses, any transactions between the same related companies. In this case, parent and subsidiary. So Spiritry bought seventy million worth of goods from the subsidiary. And for presentation purposes, for us to read, that to subtract that amount from the consolidated financials. So that's really it. Hope that kind of gives you some context. And the thing is, you must have a funny thing about Jeremy. 
my spirit tree buying the products and then sending them to somebody else that gives uh, exotic products a source of cash that they know is coming into the business, which they, they can then use to you know potentially expand the location or whatever, because there are many ways a company can inject capital into a subsidiary. They can buy services, they can inject, they can lend them debt, they can inject more equity capital. So you know, there are some ways you know you can inject capital into subsidiaries, and in this case, you know, they're buying products from your subsidiary. And I, but when it came, comes out to presentation, presentation purposes, they cannot show $308 million as total revenue. Yeah. They have to subtract it. So okay. you see $237 million right there as revenue is money that's gotten from external customers, meaning regular customers like your, your Walmart or whatever international companies, that's the actual money from external parties, not from your subsidiaries. Okay. And I can enjoy going to all this accounting tonight Okay, can you give everybody some context as to you know what you're reading when you go to company financials? All right. So hope that can I help you guys, you know, understand what's going on. And the thing is, low willing, I when you, when you spoke about you know the next word in the true revenue of exotic, the thing is we don't know what exotic is really doing to an extent because we're gonna go through the other financial notes quickly, but the thing is, we really don't know what Exotic really does if they're continually having their products sold to JFP, you understand? We know that, we know that there's value being sold because Spirit Tree is selling those goods back out on the road, but you understand? Yeah, yeah. So let's go to the other financials after you finish your review. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, so I mean, we looked at the highlights, looked at the outlook. So I think that that covers it. Um, you said there was an issue with the EPS, though. You remember that? You had mentioned that, David. You're on mute, by the way. Scroll on to the EPS note. Oh, yes, all right, there. Zoom in. So the reason why there's an error with this is because, all right, although they said the weighted average no share was used to calculate both periods, that is incorrect. So you have to recall that all the data, quote unquote, adjusted for comparative purposes, they issued new capital within the first quarter. So because of that, the average number original ordinary shares will be higher in the first quarter than it would have been for the same comparative period, you understand? Okay. So in essence, that EPS number for 2021 should actually be higher. So the EPS itself might have been flat for the quarter. You understand? So they're, they're going to correct it. I told the company already that about the error. So they're supposed yeah. to correct it. But that is just some of the things they actually look out for, guys, to actually know what's going on. You understand? Yeah. The balance was really going on in the company. Um, did you look at the cash flow, Jeremy? No, no. We didn't, we didn't get there yet. Let's go, Loco. So as we can see when we're scrolling down, this is a cash from operations that final and item. Can you scroll? Yeah. So we okay. started under the cash outflow from operations in this period. And the reason why, you know, in this case was just because the company had more receivables, which isn't a bad thing, because you want receivables to increase, be able to collect them, say, but you want receivables to increase because that means they need more business. Yeah, it's a balance, right? Yeah. If you have receivables and you have a constant way to collect them, you're okay. If you have receivables and they're aging 90, 120, 180 days, then you have a problem. You have a cash flow problem ultimately. Yeah. So the, so the thing is, although you know, I see this increase in terms of, you know, receivables, yeah. I don't see it as a bad thing because it means you need more business. And the thing is that, it's just a significant portion of the company's overall revenue, you understand? And you know, for those wondering, how do we understand what's going on with the change in operating assets and liabilities? So, the company's auto financial year end will be the base marker. And then the company's most recent quarter would be the ending period, right? So, Wait, one second, David, can you share? And I need a minute, can you share? Oh, share the, share the, the, the Q1? Yeah, man, just, just take over sharing. I want to... Oh, sure, hand, sure. I know what to you. 
Sure, just I'll do that. I'd message you, but you never see it. <laughs> ah. Yeah, man, let me know when you find it. Let me explain for persons. And the reason why I do these things, guys, is because not everybody's able to understand cash flow, balance sheet. It's not easy. So let me just go through quickly and see what I was explaining. So what I was explaining was that you see me see a company's comparative periods over over and over. What you end up seeing is that the, in this case, December end year end would have been their starting mark, and the quarter ended a while ago, it would have been the ending mark. So when you see 45 million increase right, right here, or in this case, a cash outflow, you can see reflected on the company's balance sheet as well. So 151.05 million at the end of December, and 196 million now. So the thing is, before I, can, before I even go to the cash flow statement, I can actually know if the company is spending more or certain things for the, for the company, you understand? So in inventories, went to about $4 million. Receivables, up by about $45 million. The cash went up, why? In this case, share capital. And we can look right here, payables went down, which meant that the company had a cash outflow. And current directors' current accounts went down, which meant, in this case, they pay back some directors. You what I'm saying? So that's all what happens in this change in operating assets and liabilities. And you know, for those wondering, why did JFP have two hundred and nine point eight two million dollars in proceeds from issuance of shares? The reality is that the company converted a loan from GK Capital. So that wouldn't have been capital coming from issuance of shares. And on the company's statement change of equity, they show what happened, you know? And you know, the company has $223 million, or the group of companies has $223.2 million worth of cash, which they are going to be able to use to expand the factory, invest into electric products, spices, and so forth. So, you know, these are all good things they like to see. And you know, the company at least breaks down the operational expenses. So you can at least understand what's going on for the business. So I'm gonna go back and look at the group chat to see what you guys are asking about. So Jamaica group, Jamaica producers group. All right. So I'm gonna bring that up right now, guys. Let me share my screen. All right. I'm, I'll do that one cover after, no problem. So, as JP highlighted, the consolidated revenue. And whenever I hear the term consolidated, guys, it means that, the, it means that you're talking about more than one company. When you know it's consolidated, it's just one company. So 26% increase in revenue, $1.9 billion, and 20% increase in gross profit margin, uh, increase in net profits by 42%, shareholder equity, and so on and so forth. So you know, low debt equity, which means they have a lot of capacity to seek an extra debt if they so choose. And in the case of JP, their financial period ended David, in April zoom, in zoom in a bit, David. Oh, sure. So JP's first quarter ended on April 2, not March 30, when everybody else, because JP reports for every 13 weeks, to make it two weeks in the year, you understand? So, you know, the company says, I'll get to this in a second. So, you know, this is an English credit division, you know, Kingston Wars is what makes up most of the, comp the, group, the groups uh, in this case. Profitability, you understand? And you know, it's led by Kingston Wharves and then other subsidiaries, such as, you know, JP Shipping Services Limited and now Geese. Geese is a joint venture. 
this is a wholly owned subsidiary which is JP Shipping Services Limited. When I say wholly owned subsidiary, all that means is that the subsidiary is 100% owned by the company. That's a joint venture, means that it's owned co owned by another company. So in this case, they own 50% of yeast. And you know, they say, you know, of January 2022, this division includes the Miami Freight and Shipping Company, which they acquired in January as well. And they said for the first quarter, her before its finance cost was $1.1 billion, 40% increase year over year. The division revenues was up 30%. And you're speaking about the increase in the, of what's going on at Kingston Wharves. And you know, the, what benefits Kingston Wharves as well, in terms of this growing volumes on containerized cargo and automotive shipments to Jamaica and the region. So for those who don't know, not all, not all ships stop in Eastern Caribbean islands first. What they do is that they actually, quote unquote, travel uh, to Jamaica. Some go travel with up on a smaller ship, and then the smaller ship goes to other Eastern Caribbean island. So that's why Jamaica is considered a, log a logistics point for the region because companies will send their large volumes to Jamaica, load it up to a smaller ship, and they're sent to that final destination. With JP Food and Drink, this is your St. Mary banana chips, your Tortuga cakes and, and drinks, Tortuga cakes, you know, your Hoogster drink. So, you know, these are where you find food and drink, you know? And you know, they say this is the biggest contributor of revenue to the group. So food and drink is the most revenue, but logistics is where they get the cash to, you know, run the business. And then they said, yes, they saw a 20% increase in the, in the revenue for the division. And then they said they're in farming, food processing, distribution, retailing of food and drink. And then they said they have operations in Europe, Caribbean, distribution center in the United States. And it's pretty good because they actually show you how far their reach is as a company. And you know, they mentioned the increase in material, increasing cost of raw materials and logistics. And the key, the key thing I like is that they, for the last part, they get the best for last. Our markets are continuing to normalize at a steady pace. And with overall strong recovery employment, we're optimistic about the prospects for the food and drink division once consumer routines around work, school, and leisure are re established. So for those who don't know, JP suffered during COVID in, in the food region because when you have persons who are regular commuters or, you know, undergo, they stop at a station, supermarket, wherever, and get a JP snack or, you know, a drink or whatever. When these habitual movement activities were halted, and you say, like, your product's really good, and I'm going to go to the supermarket and buy it, there have no ease of means for me to kind of source your product or have a general way that I'd actually be exposed to it quickly to actually choose it, you understand? And you know, they say, you know, diverse range of businesses to generate revenue, talking about the premium travel product business for food and drink, logistics business in Europe, USA, Caribbean, so you know, they basically benefit from the recovery and increase in commerce in this region. And they speak about core capital in terminal cranes and so forth, like Kingston Wars. And it was a pretty good chair, chairman's report. So as we can see, the consolidated asset base is, you know, oh, they, they, they separate, oh. So they present the task force assets list current liabilities. <laughs> uh, so if I add back $5 billion to this, we get about 45 billion dollars in total assets for the overall JP group of companies, where they have in about yeah, 73 million dollars in actual cash, 658 million in short-term investments and repurchase agreements. So they're very liquid, so a little bit of capital if needs be. I know you further see the company's reserves, which include, you know, retained earnings. And this is shareholders, I probably show the better shareholders it's non contrary interest related to mainly Kingston Wharf shareholders. So for those who don't know, JP owns 42% of Kingston Wharves, and because they have something called control, 
with respect to you know the subsidy with left control with respect to the subsidy of data wars they're able to consolidate it although they don't they don't own 50 percent so to, to consolidate the subsidiary it really comes down to you know being able to show control in the subsidiary so although you know you saw the company reporting this amount in consolidated profit increase year by year it doesn't mean driven by the subsidiaries the profit increase for a shareholder's profit was around 40 percent 50 percent so that's pretty good as well and you know you should look at it in the case of companies when you see profit attributable to shareholders stockholders or owners look at that line which is consolidated profit line because that rest of this, this amount is not visible to JP. And you know, in this case, most of this growth in share profit is due to GEAST. So if you check out the company's audit financials, they break down their associate ownership and what those associates contribute. And this is really GEAST and then a couple of associates bringing in the full gear to the business. Same thing down here in terms of, you know, the attributable to owners for comprehensive income change in equity and you know you can see for the overall group cash from operations decreased and this was because you know in this case their current assets increased a lot faster than their current liabilities and you know, the company invested a good amount, $220.76 million in PPE, intangibles and biological assets that they built last year. And you know, as you can see right here, acquisition of trading subsidiary, $4.8 million, which is the Miami Freighter Shipping Company in Florida. Distributions right here are dividends or capital distribution which is a legal term they use this is the money to pay back in loans and this is over cash for the group and when we go down to the segment breakdown as you can see jp Ford and is more revenue for sure but as you can see 400 division only gave this amount before finance cost and taxation while logistic infrastructure is really coming against most of its operational profitability to run the business. And this kind of shows you that although we might think of JP as this brand, which is the food, the St. Mary's, banana chips, and so forth, it's logistics which actually pays the bills because of its value. And for corporate services, this is really just looking at the head office operations. So, you know, look at segment results, it kind of shows you what. Segments in the businesses are actually contributing re what real amount of property base to the group. You understand? And they show you, you know, what was the effects of movements, which I respect. So at least you can understand, you know, if there were foreign assets, what's the real impact you're seeing on the property and the property and loss statement? So this is the euro, this is the pound, this is the US dollar. And they give it for each period comparatively. And as you can see, this year around this, this year around that last year on this time it was 145.29 for the US dollar to Jade dollar. It's 152 to 0.58 now. And this is the average exchange rate in their case. Uh this is the end every that are where, you know, general rates that were there at the end of the quarter or the end of their period. I hope that kind of helps you guys, you know, understand what's going on with respect to Jamaica producers, uh, finance costs. So, finance cost speaks to interest expense as the money you pay on loan, foreign exchange gains and losses in order to particular assets and so forth. It also can speak to your lease liabilities on the IFRS 16. So, you know, it's a multitude of things, but finance costs, you can check the company's audit if needed, but that is where you know finance costs usually come from in terms of interest expense which is usually the largest item you have release liability the effects gains and losses and so forth uh 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to the comments. Uh, Gabby's world, uh, to be honest, I haven't necessarily looked at, you know, where especially you might be near year or two. The thing is, the company has out of cash, which they wouldn't have raised if they have any purpose for it. So, you know, the company might be able to double revenues or even higher based on what they do with that cash and expand. So, you know, just look out carefully. I'm not sure the share price might be, but to have that much cash on book, it's not going to be put down just for decoration. It's going to be put to work. And I'm looking through. So I'm looking at Jam's comment and exports expansion. So yeah, that is the key thing about it. So spiritually, the more they keep expanding the export business, it's the more you're going to see increasing revenues and the lower risk they face from the depreciation of the Jamaican dollar and the overall expenses that they incur to generate and make their products. Uh, for Ricardo Behari asking about GHL. So GHL is called the data that ends to be financial gross profit and last statement. I don't think I have the actual paper on me right now. Oh, I think I do. Ah, I found it. So I'm gonna show you in a second of how I calculated what was GHL's contribution to NCV's profitability from a shareholder perspective. And then I'll go through CPG and other companies mentioned so far in the chat. So GHL is consolidated, and then the net profit line, NCB financial group separates, you know, the amount attributable to their shareholders and to non-contrarian interests, which includes Guardian Holdings and Clarion Group. And for Nia asking about you know how can you filter companies to look at? To be honest, that's a really hard thing to say because you can look at the environment, like when tourism was recovering last quarter, and be like, well, December, I should say specifically that December quarter, and first you look at those companies. But at the same time, you know, you have to just look at what companies, you know, you've probably seen around like a Fesco, if you go to the gas station, look at, for example, a Tropical battery as the country opens, a, a, a trans Jamaican highway as the traffic in returns on the roads. So, you know, it's, it's a one stop shop answer. So, the thing is, you have to just. So, for my recommendation, some of these brokers actually send out court releases every week. I group these companies together conglomerates, finance, manufacturing, tourism, whatever. And, you know, that can actually assist you in terms of breaking out what companies you probably don't want to look at immediately because you don't have an exposition that you're going to in price that much or you, you understand that's probably one way you can actually filter out in the essence and see what actually makes sense for you and you know, these reports actually include dividend yield and so forth so let me just bring up barita's uh barita's weekly release of their analysis Actually, assist stocks and research. And I just chose Barita because Barita is web thing is always up to date on their website. So weekly newsletter. So let me just bring this up. Ah, stock market report. I'm going to into the financials after, guys. So give me a second with respect to GHL. Just been that question asked earlier. So let me just zoom in. So you should be able to see my what I'm looking at right now. So that's saying that Barita gives you this weekly update. This is for last week, Friday, for the week. I know the big group by finance. Uh, the group by conglomerates, manufacturing, real estate, communication, towards my entertainment others energy so they give you at least a breakdown you know and they show you, you know the year to date change price at 52 week low and they show you right to the key hit the 52 week low during the week same for carib cement they show you the year to date change in the stock prices the weekly change so you can see that key had a massive decline last week along your portland gsx the earnings per share the trailing 12 months earnings per share you know they give you different Key metric information right information right here and they're showing you that you know sterling investment is at seven percent dividend yield and at eight point six two percent 
return on equity. And you know, they're showing even Epley having a 30.15% return on equity as well. So this is one where you can actually filter out quickly, you know, what companies you get in the market and they actually separate as well by the junior market as well. They don't separate it by a segment, but you know, and they have different companies in the US market. So that's why one way it can assist you in terms of, you know, figuring out what you can look at in these companies. And for those wondering where I got that from, Barry the Stocks and Research, uh, weekly newsletter, market updates, and they have the insights right here as well, where they give you know the recommendation of the companies, uh, PEPB, dividend yield, and they attach a link to their most recent report on these companies, a hyperlink, so you can actually go around and look. And they explain, you know, right here, what these definitions mean of how to expose the portfolio to these companies. Tropical battery, signals, last distributors, proven investments, Massey, JMB Group, Usinko, Lumber Depot Lab, GK, LASM, Separal Mail Pack, Scotia Group, Fontana, SVL, Equus Catering. There's no breakdown recommendation right here as yet, but at the same time, you know, I need to show you, you know, what's going on. So if you have a broker, just check out, you know, if the broker actually, you know, offers what I would call a weekly newsletter update to actually assist you know, the company actually highlights different articles and most of these articles are mine. So we got Barita for that. And then they give international updates and you know, you have to read the support all at once guys, because spread over the week. So, you know, I should help you. Uh, let me just go for Guardian Holdings. Uh, NCB Financial Group, March 2022. All right, you shall key one. NCB Financial Group, so they can see right here with GHL. This is represented in TT dollars, by the way, guys. So just show you that, you know, they earned $179.38 million in profit attributable to shareholders. This amount is related to subsidiaries they do have 100% ownership in. It goes up year over year. You know, their experience, you know, operating expenses went up big time. And, you know, they also pointed out, you know, that. Mm -hmm. Investment activities declined for the quarter because you know you can only make so much of them where each quarter and you know 179.376 million TT, which translates to at about a rate of 23.2 to 1 TT to JMD, about 4.16 billion dollars in net profit for the quarter. I should put it to shareholders at least, you understand. NCB Financial Group owns 61.77% of Guardian Holdings Limited. So as you can see NCB, this is the quarter, and this is the prior year. Increases on each land item, except for, you know, gains on, well, a decline on credit payment losses, which you want to happen, happen. A massive increase in other operating income is related to the NCB Selling their branches, one off gain. It's already in terms of interest activities was up year over year as well. Higher staff costs, higher, higher operating expenses, share of profits. This includes the diagnostic, by the way, guys, if you didn't know. And for so right here, it's a 7794 right? So this is what's attributed to NCB stockholders. And this includes 100% of NCB Jamaica, the bank, 50.1% of Clarion Group Limited, and 61.77% of Guardian Holdings Limited. Subtract after subtracting all intercompany intracompany transactions. 
the NCI right here, the non-contrary interest, represents the amount they do not have control over with respect to uh, Guardian Holdings and Clarion Group. So this would represent 38.23% uh, of GHL's NC ownership, that's NC Business Control, and 49.90% of Clarion Group. So what I did to actually calculate how much the NCI was for Guardian and in turn calculate how much Clarion produced as profit for the quarter, or, you know, what was each each company's contribution? In this case, I want to spell how much Clarion actually contributed. So in this case, I just did 61.77% times uh, this amount in GMD terms at least, subtracted it from the 2112, and I got 521, as the amount that will be attributable to Clarion Group Limited, which would mean that uh, the other 50% would be included in NCB Financial Group's uh, profitability attributed to stockholders up here. I will not get into com complex, but uh, that is how you know NCB can sell this guardian. I, I'll, so this right here, we see insurance activities. This is our guardian holdings limited. And you know, you see the breakdown right here between in profitability. They have consolidated net profit right here, which is up like, which is up like nearly three times. But the net, net profit attributable to shareholders was up about like almost 400%, which is pretty impressive. Uh, so I'm looking through the comments. Uh, cheese Gully side. Uh, you have to understand that you know, institutional investors, pension funds, unit trusts, uh, big companies, they have to go through a process in terms of you know, approving disbursements of funds for investments. So, so that Kingston properties is begging money hard, but probably they're determined to actually get approval. And most of them are talking about MDS. Uh, so the thing is, MDS acquired Cornwall, Cornwall Dental and Medical back in 2021. Which is the reason why you know you saw such a strong recovery or rise in the profitability of the company by the end of the financial year, which is supposed to be released end of May. We're gonna see a reaction on the market to the stock, but otherwise, you no. Know, I hope the company itself is in good, not the group, you know, the company, because the thing is, how much as come on, medical and dental services gives a good amount of increased profitability. It would still be good if, if MDS's own operations could still be cash flow positive and at the same time, you know, be have a more robust balance sheet. Uh, uh, one, one last thing I want to talk about before I get, get back to you, control to you, Jermaine. I see Nia asking about, you know, Sajikor. So, for context, Nia, Sajikor select funds are not subsidiaries of Sajikor Group Jamaica. Those are funds, listed funds basically. So you know, that you can, you can read them, but the thing is the operations are basically static. They collect dividend income and pay to us as uh, shareholders, as shareholders they collect dividends. They might get some profits, a bit profits off of selling companies when they rebalance the portfolio. But that's all they do, just buy and hold, rebalance when necessary, pay dividends or the dividend income they get from their holdings, that's it. About select financial and select MD. Sajikor select Sajikor X Fund Limited, that's a, sub, that's a subsidiary of Sajikor Group Jamaica, but at the same time, uh, for context, it uh, is as its own operations. So it's just they spoke about the performance of the hotel and so forth. So, you know, it's not, it's not a material part of the overall, you know, Sajikor Group. So I would just say to look at the Sajikor Jamaica annual report, look through the MDNA as the key points, you know, look at the M macroeconomics to understand the environment. So, you know, I hope that kind of helps you, you know, it's said yes, how you should look at the reports. Uh, uh, so for people, Jamie, can I have that comment from paper plate? Yeah. 
So the thing is, we do have a tax treaty, you know. When it comes down to investors who are to invest in Ireland from overseas, mm -hmm. I'd recommend you speak to a tax accountant in the US about that because the thing is, I understand it from the, the dividend perspective, you know, and about the whole taxation part when it comes to your taxes. But I would, I would I'd recommend you talk to a tax accountant because in your right to bring somebody on it, they cannot give you a broad based answer because. It's a very wide scope. All right. Um, have you looked at CPJ as yet? I know that was one of them in detail. Persons have asked about those two. I couldn't look at CPJ, you know, but when it comes on to no, so I, I, I didn't look at CPJ as yet, no detail. CPJ is making a lot of persons worried, you know. From what? Well, the thing is, man, they, 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 they're doing their best ever numbers and they still don't have the full number airport traffic as yet, or I should say, recovery in tourism. So, yeah. Yeah, but I worried, hey, more power to others who want to buy the company with a rebound. So, I wanted to, so what I think we can do, David, and I think it will help persons is let's look at one more company and then we can just talk about, um, I think it would benefit persons to understand how they can look at the market a little bit because i think persons sometimes are a little bit impatient with results right some of some of these companies you have purchased for this earning season if investors aren't responding no and you know it's a good company i don't think you should worry you should be buying more but persons want that kind of immediate return so you bought it maybe a month ago report is out now report was good but nobody's is is responding you're like you know did i make a wrong purchase but to me that just leaves you with an opportunity because if you think the company is going to continue to do well then it's only a matter of time so i, I wanted us to talk about that for a little bit so we can review i think detail our cpj persons have been asking for it all night so i want to at least cover that uh I'm gonna eat some something now, Jermaine. Uh, so I've been in the, in the back in the backstage. That's all yeah, you would in term, yeah. Cool, yeah, man. Cool, cool. All right, yeah. So I mean, um, so loaning. If you can't afford to buy more, then just be patient, right? So, um, so muscle memory. Everybody's time frame is different, but if you bought a month ago expecting to get some ridiculous gains a month later did you have realistic expectations is my question to you All right so me understanding what what you know lowland is saying you can't afford to buy more i get that if you can't buy more and it's down you just wait add more whenever you can but if everybody's time frame is different if you bought expecting to get 30 50 100 percent in 30 days my question is, again, do you have realistic expectations of your market? Now, I'm not saying you can't do it, but is it realistic to expect it um, is, is, is my question. So, um, yeah, that's what I'd say there. So, I mean, for me, I, <laughs> you guys know how I invest. I buy well before earning season. So I take advantage of the anticipation as well as the reality, right? Because, and, and what I mean by that is, sometimes the company will run up in anticipation. No reports were released for Spurtree when it went to um, $4 odd, for, for example. No reports were released for JFP when it went almost $2. No reports were released for Learn when the first time it, it, it got to $4. So sometimes the anticipation of of profits or 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 upcoming profits can cause some investors to be willing to pay more you always hear me use the example if somebody is willing to pay 80 million dollars for my 50 million dollar house i'm going to sell it to them so i mean yeah i'll just say that take from it what you will hopefully that was helpful for somebody um 
Just have realistic expectation, guys, please. I really encourage you. Um, I know some of you are investing with the hope to, you know, pay down loans or pay for your monthly expenses. So I get it. There are multiple ways to earn money and you don't want to have unrealistic expectation, right? So I'm no, so I'm not saying it's ridiculous in a muscle memory. I'm just saying you need to understand that if you have that expectation, there's also the risk that you are wrong. Right? So that's all I'm saying. You know, if you are expecting that and you're expecting it every month, then to me, I, I don't know if that's necessarily a sober view. Because even though I so I would have made purchases to expecting companies to do well. It turns out that okay i'm wrong but it's not like i had you know everything i had riding on that being true i'm already looking for other opportunities so that's that's all i'm saying really so um yep the game is investing for the long term all right that's that's what i have to say as well all right so let's look at Deramon trading. Everybody's been asking about this one. So let's see. Um, Deramon trading company with purchase consideration. Okay, 932 million. First quarter ended. Okay. And close those. Okay, so this is board of directors pleased to report the unaudited financials. So let's see, revenue. Uh, marginal 5% increase, same, same of above the same quarter last year, gross profit 6% increase, um, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization 55% increase. That is good. Net profit 7%, though. I mean, to me, you have to, 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 to match that based on the industry that it's in so so depending on how you look at it that may be good or bad net profit attributive net profit attributable to shareholders 165 million that would be seven percent up from last year earnings per share has gone down that's what we're seeing here so negative 32 percent okay so those are the highlights there um I'm looking for anything that stands out in terms of anything I would explain. So the impact of the present economic climate continue to affect the outturn of all operations as reflected in the first quarter's report. So that is still impacting them. The global economic slowdown as reported negatively impacted revenues in some of their businesses. So you have to bear that in mind. Um, gross profit increase, we saw that before. The period experienced significant price increases from our suppliers, and I anticipate this trend will continue for the foreseeable future. Increased cost, lower profit, right? The management team remains nimble with adjusting prices while absorbing as much as they can. Right, so bear that. Um, customer's not spelled right there. Um, Let's look at the core activity here. Distribution and retail arms of the business recorded revenue of 2.8 .8 billion for the first quarter and remained flat when compared to what was reported in 2021. It should be noted that based on the auditor's recommendation, the company's revenue was reclassified as 3.7 billion reported for the first quarter. As such, the overseas retail sub for is now being reported under the group revenue and not company. So just bear that in mind. They continue to navigate the challenges. Gradual reopening have provided a boost. Um, 
they remain resolute. I'm trying to see if there's anything that could really stand out for this company. Um, I think this is the three months muscle memory, right? Three months, that's what we're looking at here. Just the quarter, just the, the most recent quarter, all right? All right, so inflation has impacted the disposable income of con consumers and is reflected in the general reduction in spending by consumers as measured by the average, average basket size within our retail business. The business, however, re received a boost from the reopening of schools, reopening of the entertainment industry and night commerce and the general relaxation of curfew measures. Um, so maybe a quarter after all of this reopening, we'll see maybe uh, better results for them. Well, relatively. Um, finance charges for the core activities for the three months period was 82.6 million compared to 22 million. We have to figure out what that is. Um, for an exchange movement has been reported in finance charges. Pre-tax profit recorded for the three months was 93.95 million representing a 145% increase. So we'll check that out soon. So market performance. So pretty much a year later, the price has gone up 3%. That, that's what we're seeing here. Um, junior market index, that's what they're sharing. Overall index for the junior market would have gone up. And JSC manufacturing index has gone up 17%. So what this is saying is that compared to the index, it would not have um, outperformed it there. All right, it's, it's speaking about the recovery of the JSC there. Um, so it mentioned this, the, this acquisition, and we covered this in a previous video, the acquisition of, of Arosa Limited that's mentioned right here. And we, we saw the article mention the consideration of 932 million for that acquisition. Production is being ramped up for both Spicy Hill Farms and Arosa and will provide additional products for both distribution and retail. So we can look forward to that. So I'll continue to monitor their business, the war between Russia and you. Ukraine would have affected global commerce and directly impacts food price, logistics, energy, raw materials, et cetera. So that's gonna impact their business. Um, all right, so I was hoping for something on their outlook to see if there's, they, there's, there's anything coming up for them. There was nothing reported there. So let's look at the statements. So this is what three months ended. That's what we looked at before. So as we saw, revenue was marginally up. Um, so group year audited for 2021 was 17 million overall. You multiply this quarter by four, they would, would not reach this amount. So you'd want to look at Q2, see how Q2, Q3 shape up, see if there's improvement there. Um, administrative costs would have would have increased selling and distribution costs would have gone up then they mentioned increased costs from their suppliers so that's not surprising um less finance costs profit before taxation would have gone up um an estimate for taxation there a net profit attributable to shareholders would have been 172 million as opposed to 160. And so the EPS still would be lower though, based on, um, so I need to look to see, did they do an APO? I think so. I think they did an APO last year, right? Okay, this was the, the reclassification they spoke about. Um, this would be about three months ended March 22. Let me scroll down further. This is their balance sheet. 
Um, usually for the balance sheet here in this quick review, I'm just going to look at um, just a few things here. So receivables and prepayments up slightly. Inventories have decreased. Um, let me go and compare it to this one. Receivables and prepayments would have been up from the audited financial uh, audited end of year here. Um, Inventory is up slightly from 1.5 there. Cash, have less cash here. We can see where that went in the cash flow statement. Payables in the short term would have increased slightly from 791. Short term loans would have decreased from, from 296. Um, share capital, retained earnings, foreign exchange reserves, borrowings. Okay. I'm not seeing anything that's standing out to me here. I'm scrolling through quickly. Um, looking for the cash flow statement, guys. That's what I'm looking on. I see your question there. So, um, how many, oh, how much data of annual reports are good enough to conduct good analysis? So the way that we actually recommend you do analysis, so there's a video that I'll refer you to that speaks to all the steps that I recommend you do for an analysis of a company. So let me just probably say it this way. Um, you want to have a system by which you can shortlist companies um, you can't do full analysis for every company before you decide to purchase them. That's going to be too time consuming. So you want a system to be able to shortlist them or put them on, on, on what I call a watch list. So if you watch our stocks to watch videos, that can show you the kind of thought process that we go through to do that. So once it's on my shortlist, that's when I'll go through the financial statements. I'm reading on the history of the company. I'm looking at the price history. I'm looking at the future outlook for the company, what's, what's expected in the next six months, 12 months, two years, et cetera. And then that's what I, I factor in all of that and I make a buying decision from that point. So the annual reports are good to see because usually other, like the broker's recommendation and, and those things are based off these same financials that we're going through now. So when we go through them ourselves, and we see a report coming out about the company that's favorable or recommending the company, it's not gonna be a surprise to us because we would have gone through it ourselves. All right, so hopefully that helps. All right. Uh, Cheesy saying both May Market and Junior Market, how many shares are realistic to own? Um, that's very subjective, right? So. Um, how many shares to own is subjective. Now, I recommend that you concentrate if you're a small investor um, because it just makes sense if you have 20 stocks and one stock goes up a 1,000%, it probably doesn't move your portfolio because you're probably down maybe five or 10 of those companies, right? It's very unlikely that you own 20 stocks and all 20 are, are, are profitable. Right, so the less you own, the more research you can do, the, the better quality picks you have, then you can maybe realize better returns. All right, hopefully that helps. All right, so um, net profit there. Uh, let's see, so depreciation, that figure would have gone up from the 15 million year before. Inventories, outflow of cash there, receivables, um, 840 million, payables, 335. So in terms of net cash, operating activities, outflow of 261 million, right? Um, cash flow from investment activities, 153 million spent on investments, and then 134 million spent on acquisition for property, plant, and equipment. Uh, loan received in terms of financing activities, lease liability, 168 million that was paid. That was half 
around half of what was same period before. Repaid 22 million worth of loans, deferred tax liabilities there. And you'd have seen the APO proceeds on this one, but same time last year. Um, so cash and cash equivalents are significantly down for them at this point, right? A third of what it was last year. Okay. Um, which one was I looking at? Okay, group. Okay. Let me go through and see if there's anything here. Just looking to see if there's anything interesting to note here. Segment reporting. Um, I guess we can check this out. So the operating segment is a component of the company that engages in business activities from which it may earn revenues and incur expenses. So the operating results are regularly reviewed. Let me skip down further. The company has identified the following segments. So there it's their distribution business. That's household products, chilled and ambient beverages, detergents, and bulk foods. There's a retail. Then there are other operations as flavors and favorite and fragrances palettes and products of wood, right? So that's that's their segment in terms of business. Okay. All right. What was the next company that you guys wanted me to look at? I think detail in terms of price. I saw some price, price movement earlier this year, which are about three, four to six. So they started the year, let me look at year today, started the year at $2.20. And they ended today at 320. So they're up almost 50% from the start of the year. Went as high as 350. So um, let's bear that in mind. And they have 4.5 billion shares outstanding. Okay. So I mean detail, I would what you want to consider for a company like detail, you want to look to see the impact. They mentioned increasing costs. The good thing for them is that schools have reopened, everything is quote unquote normal. So I'll be looking at their Q2 to see if there's any improvement, but based on revenues for the first quarter, if that remains constant, they're not gonna do, they're actually going to realize less revenues though it seems like they may actually be more profitable depending on some of the measures that they put in place. So detail is a tricky one, I would say. Um, you want to watch to see how things turn out for them in terms of the economy, there's gonna be a great impact there. So currently trading at 35 times in terms of PE. So bear that in mind as well, all right? Um, all right, so I think that has to do with the, the comment that I was making before. Yes, exactly, Romario, very, very important, right? So, and this is my consideration for any companies that's on my outlook. So. You guys know I'm looking at Trans Jamaica. If it is that there should potentially be another lockdown, that's going to greatly impact a company like that. So to me, every company in this current quarter may realize their best quarter in the last two years, right, for a lot of these companies. So to me, going back to the conversation we were having earlier, a lot of those companies that maybe had, had disappointed you for Q1, you want to wait for Q2 because most companies are going to report in their best quarter in over two years. Mark my words that I said that's at 9.19 on, on May 19th. Check me back in a couple of months about that, All right? Um, so let me bring up this comment here. It is subjective, but from a theoretical point of view, greater than 12 to 15 does not add any greater level of that. I agree with that. I agree with that because you also have to think about whether or not those companies are negatively or positively correlated, right? Just because you have 15 stocks doesn't mean you're diversified. If you have, if you have 10 companies from the financial industry and five retail, that's not diversification, right? You, most of those are, are concentrated in two industries. If you have 10, 10 financial and five retail. So properly diversifying your portfolio 
means you're picking companies are, that are not likely to see or realize the same economic impact in terms of negative or positive together, right? So you have to be able to know how to put together a well-balanced portfolio for it to be properly diversified, right? So excellent point there. Can't, can't overstate that, right? So Jamil, or Jamil, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, had max three, but mostly one. So right now, I, I have more stocks than I want to have. So I was expecting to close some positions completely this earning season. I was wrong about some of them. So I've extended my timeline on some of them because as I said, I think a lot of companies are gonna have an excellent Q2. So some of those companies that have been selling down, I see that as opportunities to buy and I'm waiting for Q2 to say what is happening there, all right? No clue on, on, on preference shares, Romario. Never bought them, don't look at them. Um, David would be a good person to speak to about that. Um, yeah, you know what? Let me, uh, remind me in the group to cover it um yeah let's talk about that you could you, you could be on to a point right there you could have a point right there actually very true i agree with that okay all right so guys i'm going to is there any company that you asked for that i have not covered let me know i know i know i heard cpj right so cpj is going to be the last company that we look at until we do the weekly review we can look at some more of these all right so if you've been if you've been here all this time from the start let me know in the comments that you were here from the start of the video if you joined after that's fine but i just want to acknowledge those who would have been here from seven o'clock we're going on almost two and a half hours here all right all right so cpj my question to persons is for those who are holding cpj what made you buy a CPJ in the first place? Let me know, all right? Why are you a CPJ shareholder before I go further? Let me hear your reasoning. I'm, I'm just checking out the, the Telegram group here to see if there's anything that I need to, um, to point out here. <laughs> all right so okay thanks for being honest here romario so i think a lot of persons are owning cpj because of hype right so tell the truth no um it does i'm not saying that they're not a good company by the way because we haven't looked at the report as yet but i'm saying some persons only heard about CPJ because I know earlier this year, Kalila would have done a video about them growing most of 500% at the start of the year. And they were going up a little bit more. So person just kind of, hey, let me, let me jump on this bandwagon, right? So year to date, started the year at $12 and went as high as about $22 here. And persons have been waiting, let's say the high, 20, $26. Right, so it's down to almost four, that's almost down 50% from the start of the year. All right, still up year to date, but significant. So there are persons who have volumes 1.5 million in terms of volume at the peak. So I mean, yeah, persons would have been been expecting more. 1.1 billion shares outstanding, right? So this is not really a significant amount based on the number of shares outstanding. We'll have to look at top 10, etc. Right. So there you go, right? Uh FOMO. Um <laughs> I think I think Lowly knows that. Um he's 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 been following our channel for a while. Okay. So guys, unfortunately, Carreras, SVL, those companies, unfortunately, we can't cover on our channel for obvious reasons, okay? All right, so CPJ, let's, let's look at their latest report.
This is the third quarter. Okay. So we'll have a good idea as to how they'll end the year from this report. Again, as I always say, guys, even before I look at it, if you believe in a company, persons don't agree with you. If your time horizon fits, as 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 Muslim member said, if your time horizon fits, then I would just continue to buy. You know, if you're if you have a short time horizon and it seems that the price is going in the opposite direction, then you need to determine whether or not it's worth your attention currently. Okay. All right, performance recorded sales of US 28 million for the three months exceeded projections made for the entire fiscal year 2021-2022 exactly scott you are actually right um but here's the thing well i'll get to that next definitely so despite the positive results the quarter started slowly due to uncertainty around the surge of the last variant that we heard about for covid most notably in january and february there was significant increase in tourist arrivals in March, resulting in solid sales performance for the third quarter. So again, remember what I said, that the next Q is going to be a lot of companies' best performing Q ever. So if they did their best, if they did so well in the, their third quarter, which ended March, they would have seen the significant increase in tourist arrivals. For all we know, that still is continuing that should tell you that they're shaping up to have a good end of year before even seeing the rest of the report, okay? Sales ended at US 86 million, which represents a 133% increase over the same period last year. Increasing revenues during the last nine months can be attributed to continued confidence in a company and a sustained rebound in the hospitality sector, right? So that's one of the things to look for. Profit before tax was 7.92 million, an increase of 11 million. Uh, provision for taxes recorded net profits um, for the period, increasing by 10 million over last year. Management continues to proactively engage in cost containment activities. Love to see that. Implementing measures to enhance operating efficiencies to increase sales, market share, and profitability. They're managing increases in fuel costs, which is affecting everybody, and evaluating an investment to increase the use of solar energy to help offset some of those costs. Um, balance sheet, I'm looking through for highlights. I'm just going to state the highlights. Um, okay, they have outlook. Perfect. The CPJ group remains optimistic for the fourth quarter of the financial year due to strong hotel bookings reported by their customers, hint, hint. Also, the group has strategically been focused on diversification of revenue streams with further investment in our stores and additional product lines for local consumption. The company continues to upgrade infrastructure, including their fleet, anticipation of growth to improve our service. We look forward to the opening of CPJ Market Draxall outlet outlet in the mid summer of 2022 so that is coming right very important to note as well they recently renovated and expanded market in montego based on completed and has been well received cpg has also begun to work of enhancing the market in kingston accelerate the use of technology launch your new b2b online platform and will be adding customers on a phased basis that's good to note as well. You may see increased revenues based on that. Um, that's pretty good. CPJ continues to strive to provide highest level of, of service. Um, let me check. So CPJ is trading. Um, wow. Okay. Okay. Interesting. That's all I'll say. Interesting. All right, let's look at the balance sheet. Accounts receivable has gone up significantly. I mean, as David and I mentioned before, that's a good thing because it means they're doing more business. Maybe some some lines of credit were extended. Accounts receivable mean accounts receivable means they expect to get it within a year. Okay, David, I see. I'm gonna bring it back on, all right? Oh, 
I was going to say that uh, so although we love to compare year over year with respect to the balance sheet, I kind of like to look at the perspective or looking at it to the audited financials. Okay, it kind of gives you the real overview. Okay, this one, yeah. Okay, I got you, I got you. Fair enough. Yeah, because the thing is, whenever we, so whenever we compare the year by year, sometimes we can have things that look skewed. You know what I'm saying? You understand? So when I compare it against audited, it matches the cash flow and actually assists you in understanding what's going on. So but like it was in the name and the year over year increase in accounts receivable. It's just uh year over year nine million, but from a yeah, yeah, financial year to know it's only four million dollars in account receivable going up. The bigger substantial thing you should look at is the inventories. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, man. Gotcha. Because if you the thing is back in Q one they borrowed about like eight million dollars to buy inventory. And you know, to see inventory when by eight million US dollars. And by the way, guys, this is all US dollars, by the way. Yeah, you mentioned that right, Jeremy? Yeah, man, yeah, man. When when I was talking about the highlights, everything was in US. So yeah. Yeah. So when it comes on to, you know, uh, seeing that increase in performance, especially from a kind of thing that like costs you, but isn't a bad thing. Kind of reality is you're going to have to do business with customers and credit. Not every, yeah. Unless your customers are customers coming in the small market, your customers are going to need credit, do you understand? Yeah. And I said it's a bad thing. What you want to make sure is that your customers are paid on time. Yeah, yeah. So typically, what what i do i mean increased receivables is never a bad thing as i said the only thing you want to be concerned about is that number i mean usually if the companies hint to some problems in terms of receivables then i mean i'd start to take notice but um i look at it from one quarter to the next to see how their cash is increasing over time to tell me whether or not they're able to to manage that number right because if it if it keeps growing and growing and growing then they're going to have less and less cash because that's the impact of, of accounts receivable it impacts cash flow of course so, i was going to point out was that what you also should probably, should, what you also should probably mention is with respect to you know when it comes to account receivables you should also check out the net amount uh because for example, I create. And if you look at the audit financials, you realize that the net the net trade receivables is pretty substantial. And nobody's really talking about that. You know? Yeah. What have you made that guys? So for some lovely context, uh what you see here in the balance sheet is a net amount. It accounts for what we call at least in accounting, but in investing. Uh, something called expected credit losses thanks to IFRS 9. So what happens is that in the case of iCreate, yeah, the money we was, had high receivables, but the thing is 90% of their actual receivables was, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I cut again? Oh yeah, that beautiful term. It's called 99% of their receivables was past 180 days. Which is why wow. you sign a high write down or you know shahai net receivable balance yeah yeah but when it comes on to cpj can you break up cpj's cpj's num yeah, yeah. numbers yeah. german so i'm seeing right here you realize that cash is kind of flat we can look at our percentage to know why cash is flat but you know in all honesty i have no issue with a company when it, if it's growing, it's receivable balance, and it's not growing at a fast rate and the growth of, uh, of, of not just profitability, but at the, at the growth of, uh, yeah. And my problem the company growing its uh, receivable balance quite fast, once it's able to justify it, when it comes on to uh, revenue, because for those who don't know, do you guys know what receivables are? And he's why I asked this is because your persons here we really don't know. So 
receivers is basically you uh, sending a good to a, par a party, you transfer the good or the service, but they have yet to pay you the actual amount. So that's all a receivable is. And you know, I sense that's not a bad thing. The key thing is to so what degree they're giving you receivable is going on, and, and also, you know, understanding what's going on for the business. So, hope you guys can appreciate what I'm speaking about right now. Yeah, I hope so as well. <laughs> Definitely hope so. So when you go and look at it right there, short term promissory notes is flat, current portion of long term borrowers is flat, short term loans, that is something of of, of suspect. Yeah. Not just suspect, so something you, of quite of, of mm -hmm. note. Like what I'm saying. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. We would hope to see something like about that in the notes. Um see yeah, because really as I mentioned that that short term loan quite quickly or quite notably because <laughs> and that's usually what i look for as well those 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 differences yeah because right, right yeah. now when you check it out when the companies uh, uh short term loans go up like that it means that they have a, the cash what they earn right now is going to be paying down something that should be paid down later you know yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, good point. All right, so um, revenue. So you say you like to compare it to the audited, right? So this would be audited for the 12 months and it is 58. This seemed like it, this was scanned, by the way. Really it is, no, this, this is scanned. I'm going to talk to Mark about it. Oh my gosh, I, this is hard to read, man. And that is, I, 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 and this is why I tell people that, you know, I always encourage persons to actually speak to management and express their concerns because mm -hmm. after we're done finish going through uh, CPJ, I'm going to show yeah. you Salada. Okay, but I don't know if we have time to go through another no, one. No, 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 I'm not going through the report in detail, Jermaine. Okay, okay. I just want to compare so persons can understand that if you talk to management, yeah. they can actually appreciate what you're talking about sometimes. Yeah. Sakai so caught me saying, wow, earlier. I mean, just this is what I did for 12 months ended June as 15. Remember that was, remember that, was that included 20, that included six months of 2020, you know? So, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, compare that to what you're seeing here for the nine months. I mean, you're so, so, so what you can expect. So, let's say they do, they did 28 million this quarter, as I said, no more restrictions, increase hotel bookings new location launched i think it's safe to say this next quarter and i don't know if you agree david is going to be their best quarter this no they, no they, their best profitable quarter was december quarter but from a revenue standpoint mm -hmm. i wanted to look back at their prior results but they might this might be their it's actually it's going to be their best year on record for revenue and profitability so exactly right so that's that that's why Kai heard heard me saying well, because when when you look at that, so for the nine months they're here. So again, and and these are the kind of things for me that um, may impress certain investors when you see okay, because if if they were to report it here, you would see um, what this is almost more than fifty percent growth in revenues for the for for you know over over the previous year, so on and so forth, right? So gross profit for the nine months almost doubled what they would have done the, the entire 2021. And and I think it speaks to expense control actually. Because there's yes. a joke about it, Jermaine. They are doing less volumes. So what does that tell you? Exactly. So and, and again, that to me hits the spotlight on this current quarter. Right. Um so it says here profit so they, they would have made a loss for the for the financial year um 2021 and there's seven million us in profit right do they pay dividends mm, they only pay the dividend once and that's probably in 2015. they have seven million us that may make a nice dividend no no remember Jermaine. we just spoke about this now Jermaine. we just spoke about this <laughs> profit doesn't matter if you can't I know, I know. them. 
I know, I know, I got you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just dreaming, right? But even no, the thing is, like, the capital should pay dividends shortly again or soon. Mm -hmm. But I don't really want him to focus on, you know, clean up the balance sheet. You know, honesty. Yeah. Go back, go back on the cash flow. Yeah, I was, I was gonna look for if, if they've ever paid a dividend. I'm not seeing it. Jeremy, here, like, you won't see it here because JS only for the last twelve months. So no, go, no, go back on the JS. Go back on the JS website. Go back on the JS website. Go up to the top. You see the search bar, search glass right there. Put in CPG and dividend. Will I actually find anything? You should. Yeah, see it there. Wow. Yeah, so the thing is, I was missing in that time, but the thing is, CPJ was oh, CPJ and Dolphin Cove are always laggards, you know, honesty. Six cents, okay. Six cents. But what kind of numbers were they doing back then? Now, to me, that's too far back to judge 2017. No, you, you don't have to go too far back, but the thing is that they were doing a lot more in terms of business, but mm -hmm. at the same time, they were not there. I remember that I think I think there was around I think 2018 was when they, that was in the 2018 financially when they had the IT write off related to the whole inventory management system, you know. Remember that saga? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, so when you say you don't want them to tidy up the balance sheet a little bit more before dividends. Go down to cash flow. Go down to cash flow first. Go down to cash flow. Okay. You're speaking about paying the dividend, but let's look at the cash flow, cash flow to see what's going on. At least they're actually getting their a retained earning now instead of an accumulated deficit. But you see what I'm seeing, Jermaine? You have the account receivable right there. You have the inventories. You understand? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Okay, okay. When you buy more inventory, that's cash even the, even the books. Yeah. And you have account receivables on the road. That's more you have in your pocket. And scroll okay, down further. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Is a property appliance and equipment addition, which is related to the Montego Bay store and so forth. And as you can see right there, they repaid a loan of $7.407 million, but they've gotten $9.63 million in overall loans for the nine months. Okay. So, you guys, I'm showing sure you, Jeremy. Yeah, so they said it's about financing during their operations. For the short term borrowings? You go back up to the balance sheet, yeah. Was that this here? The short term borrowings right here? That's to, that's part of it. Go down to the non current liabilities. For it. Yeah, see there. So, okay, okay, okay. ah, so the thing is, they paid down on the long term debt. Related party balance gone up slightly. Long term permissory note flat. So, it's probably, it's probably the short term borrowing along with something else, but I can't identify it immediately. Yeah. But okay. I guess, you know, and this is why I tell you that you have to be very careful when it comes on to, you know, looking at uh, a company because you'll be like, you're going to go say, you know, there could be a dividend. But the thing is, it's the difference the balance sheet. So let's yeah. go to current liabilities. Let's go back up to current liabilities, right? And current assets. So on the debt, three million dollars in current assets. Their yeah, project that they want to execute was at the same time. Yeah, four point eight million worth of current short term they have to pay back. We might have a bond coming up next year in Germany. The five hundred million dollar bond they took out back in twenty eighteen. That's coming due next year. You yeah, understand? Okay. So the current liabilities are going to go up. The cost of balance is flexible, you know. It's at like the same time. I guess I'm showing you those still, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and it's about the time that you know, although some companies can can pay a dividend, even if the balance sheet isn't pretty. But the thing is, it takes extreme capital management. No man, focus focus on, on getting things to a certain point first. I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, go to sell go to sell uh, the uh the step in Salif in the in the URL or just select. Salada was the one you wanted to point out because remember we don't have no I know I'm no I'm not going through the reports in the German. Okay. I just kept repeating it. I was like, I'm gonna show you something. Okay. So All right, where you want me to go? Okay, just press back twice. Just press, just press back twice. Yeah, so Salada is to the no select Salada. No, go to select stock right. Go to select stock. Just tap in Salif, Salada. 
Yeah, see there. Scroll down. Uh, scroll down. Scroll down. So the March, the March, the March report. Open it in, in one tab. Scroll down again. Uh, view all news. December thirty one. Yeah, that report. That report there. To the, yeah. left, to the left, December report, the December report. Yeah, so you can just open those two reports. Open the December report first, though. So, you see, see how it looks dirty and scanned? Mm. I mean, this, scanned, still, you know. this still is a little easier to read than the CPJ one based on the font, though. Agreed, but continue scrolling down. Like, why is this still happening in 2022? No. So, go to the, the March report now. Jermaine, yeah, yeah. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> okay, thank you, David. Much no, better. I literally went to the AGM and said, hey, stop scanning your bloody reports. Yeah. I told him it is very difficult. Because the thing is, I'm a person who is young. And I'm complaining about being able to see the report. Imagine yeah. an older person, you know, who is probably going to struggle and look at a scan report. You understand? Yeah, man, I agree. 100%. No, and I, I just told him, hey, just get into graphic design and just, you know, put it in, a, in color, like, and stop scanning the thing, make it machine readable. Yeah, man, I get you. I agree. I agree. All right, David. So I know this is not a stocks to watch segment. Don't worry. Since we have 70 persons here, they've stayed here for two and a half hours. Um, what are you looking at or what what are your you know expectations for the next quarter? Mm, so, so right now, BOJ raised the policy rate by another 50 basis points again. So it's 10x in the last what? Uh the last eight months. Mm -hmm. So you know, a couple of companies finance costs are going to go up. So that's one thing to look at and impact of profitability. Then, in the case of finance companies, their prop, their net profit margin, their net interest income for those who lend money should be going up. But their OCI line, other comprehensive income, that's going to drop out like a like something out of a steel pan. I don't know where I could use, but it's going to be very red for the other comprehensive income line because they feel like their bond portfolio and the instruments are going to be crushed going forward. I know you saw where VMware said you know, they suffered in the first quarter into the trending activities because of the volatility in the markets, not just Jamaica, but the US markets in particular. Yeah. And they took the hit as well based on the measurement of some of their assets on their profit and loss statements. So, right now, for this coming couple, next quarter and couple months, you know, it's all about looking at who can actually increase prices without getting slapped in the face. And, you know, also who can actually manage to really weather the storm because you can only increase prices so much and no more. It's going to come a breaking point where customers are going to just say, hey, I'm going to just do less. You know? So does that mean we are we are expecting um, limited profitability because we saw even where, where detail would have said it that they're trying to mitigate some of those costs that they're, they, they increase costs. So, for example, those companies, is it that we kind of say, well, they're going to try and hold off, but maybe there's only so much that they can do and no more. So is that the companies stop being as profitable, which means prices may go up. So they may be more profitable, but they do less in revenue. So it may look in less, less impressive, so to speak. Exactly. Because the thing is, it's a very delicate balance. Because, for example, Grace Kennedy's results. Nobody's been talking about Grace Kennedy their profits went up along with their revenue. So revenue went up by 16% in a German. And mm -hmm. normal day, everybody has screamed about GK. But their, their expenses went up by 16% no, because everybody well. wants to see 100% increase in revenue. No, look at it. 16% increase in revenue, 16% increase in expenses. Net profit, consolidated net profit, though, was only up 2%. 
and this is for the yeah. International Food Division. The PBT before tax was down due to logistics costs and higher raw material costs. And the thing is, even myself, I have talked to different manufacturers and they've saying, yo, it's rough. Because yeah. right now, if you're a member, you actually should be your own goods. You have to be, you know, paying more in fuel costs. If you also start a third party, in the case of you contracting for truckers, you have to pay truckers more because the truckers are going to take a loss to run your trucks, right? And then when it comes on to, for example, if you have a, so like in case of a salad uh, with uh, Laska distributors, uh, that's going to be like, yo, come on, come on. No, and it's, 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 it's just the reality because yeah. the thing is, no company is going to run their margins down when they don't have to depend on this kind of environment. Because as much as you want to say, yo, companies be considerate, companies have shareholders to, to be happy. And only companies that, that cannot uh, have pricing power, or what you'd call elasticity in pricing, are going to be able to suffer. And, you know, I mentioned separate earlier in the episode about, you know, how separate basically to the hit with respect to, you know, the reality governing the ability to pass on price increases. Their net mar- their gross profit margin suffered and and they still have the ace burden to increase profitability and revenue, but at the same time, you know, it's a real mess out there. So although everybody's optimistic about the first quarter and it was so laggard and you know, it's as spectacular as people thought it was ought to be. We need to be careful going into the second quarter results because yeah, the com- country is open, the much should look good. Because business is back to normal, but is business really back to normal? Because the company has to be considering this whole thirty percent increase in expenses sometime and whatever. It's not easy because as oil prices go up and the dollar, the dollar is remaining stable, oil prices are going up alone. Cheap prices are going to be like, all right, see, hey, you see this? Take a price increase, and that is just the reality. And if a manufacturing company, for example, they're going to be suffering if they don't have alternative means of generating energy. So when we're seeing companies talking about they took an eight million eight one million dollar expense when their combined uh LNG plant was done for like I think a month, that kind of shows you what's gonna happen. Like it was gonna take an eight million dollar in hit in this one month from using JPS. Yeah. And remember they are like the energy costs are gone by like fifty percent after this that combined LNG plant, you understand? Yeah. And if for finance companies we we need to be careful right now when it comes on to you know looking at them so that, because that, that, that's one of the companies i'm watching though you know we think i think we think is in a better place their goods are in a fast moving consumer good space they can afford to give price increases because they have economies of scale and you know when it comes on to for example i was mentioning a while ago finance companies for example they don't like an flexibility to pass on prices to the cons- to their customers because when now we're going to loans increase and you have to write enough more loans, you have a problem. Yeah. Anyway, you spin it. We got some are paying less back to you, your customers, I should say, you have a problem. So what you're probably going to see shortly, especially in the commercial banking sector, a lot more person to be refinancing their loans in order to have low monthly payments while paying more in overall and more tradition of the loan. Because although the banks are seeing that the only consumer is by 1%, one person is so small. Um, but when you can't consider that people are already spending more and more every week on gas. So for example, so why they so like somebody pointed out earlier, you know, that they spent at that gas station, they spent 14 grand, 15 grand for 60 liters. 60, so gas prices have gone up by $18 in the last month. 87 and 90. Before as I'm pretty jump side, you know. Six times eighteen dollars is one thousand and eighty dollars extra. In just gas costs, or it's just a fuel cost, you understand? So, okay. that's just giving you the context of the reality that as much as I want to say, yo, country open, things like get me or whatever, it's a very tough time. Like, it's a really tough time. Like, as I said, come with, so like your separate and the, the last cause, or the last cause, I should say, last manufacturing, I'm looking, looking up for them keenly because. Their customer segment is really focused on the lower end of the spectrum, you know? 
the lower earners, and that person looking to cut back, a last cut product might become more attractive because as much as we like to we like to floss and say you know, we're drinking from Starbucks. I mean to get some last cup coffee or, or some salad of coffee and say, yeah, this is my new Starbucks. Give me a look at Starbucks from the store and say, yeah, this is my Starbucks coffee. Well, you know, I mean, I'm the captain of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, we think of for me is one of the companies I, I think I'm looking at. I, I think that um, they're shaping up to have a good year. I think um, Tropical as well, looked at them earlier. Mm -hmm. um, because I think yeah i think i think there are some some opportunities there that might have been missed and one other company that i'll probably mention here um i i, I can't talk about fesco because i'm ridiculously biased i can't talk about fesco all right so right um, now to be honest oh yeah i forgot to mention the persons were holding cash like crazy saying i'm dreading really jumping ready for the next ipo for one if it helps to god so you have a JH developer account or your broker account can move quickly. You have to fight in the first couple of days to get shares. And two, I must say, guys, love talking about say so you go put them in there as a, a company for IBO, you to get into percent allocation and 10,000 units. You basically put your cash to burn for the last month. If it, yeah, if it, yeah. it cash is fat along with the broker. So, you know, so let's tell you right now, IPO is over a billion dollars and up. You might see them, or when it comes to equity markets of that nature, you probably might still see them, but they might be underwritten, or you, you know, you might see them companies might just continue going to APUs when that's raised billions because I'm expecting to be seeing the rest issue is the key. It's only the key when you have to buy it, when you have the, the, the top shareholders putting the money back in, but the offer is underwritten, so you know. But David, in general, I'm not happy with, I don't like when. So this idea that you're marketing these offers to allow small investors the opportunity to, to, to participate and you can't, it's, a, so it's two things, right? If the offer is so big that everybody can participate, those offers are likely not going to do as well because they're such large volumes, but that allows everybody to get a good share. Then you have the smaller ones where you get literally nothing like if you should add up your ownership of the company percentage wise you don't own 0 0.0001 percent of the company but that grows by 200 percent and you feel good you, you, your five thousand dollar turn 20 you feel good but then <laughs> did, did, did you really build wealth with that company is, is i'm not saying about you know saying. so and you know somebody was questioning me and saying i'm talking and everything and i'm like bridging we we'll talk to you about them we talk about the investment banking, humble yourself. The FSC has proposed guidelines, they're implementing them, although they're supposed to be proposed guidelines. And you know, they, with the FSC has signed up on the offer anyway. So, as much as you want to say, going to come out next year, the FSC can put it in place right now. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to see more junior market offers at best, but even then, those offers might get subscribed quickly just because you have a small man looking to put money somewhere. But, Institutional investors, they're not going to fight in the market and fight with everybody else <laughs> to be getting an IPO because some of these companies are institutional funds, pension funds, units, and so forth. It just takes them one check to clear out some of these offers. So, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Got you. All right, David, thanks a lot. Um, thanks, guys, for being here. Please like the video. Please like the video. Really, really would be helpful. David, you gone already? I was gonna ask you if you I'm not gone, man. I'm right here in the background, you know. All right. So guys, um remember our free class coming up next weekend. Register if you're interested in joining. Uh we're likely gonna have it on YouTube, but register because then we'll be able to send you the link and the reminder. Uh join us on Telegram if you haven't done so as yet. If it's your first time, subscribe, join us on Telegram. We talk about investing and other things that would impact us. Um, so it's just general conversation, easy to understand. Nobody's smarter than the other. We're all on the same level. Just some of us are a little bit further ahead. And um, yeah, so thank you so much. Really, really appreciate you being here. Do, am I going to do a video tomorrow since I did one today? Probably, but it's gonna be a really short one, maybe 30 minutes. Because I want to practical, practical 
Unmute Mr. David there. Um, I want to get back to some of the more practical videos because I realize that when we do the weekly stock reviews or the videos um, to cover the market, we're not really covering a lot of the topics that you're interested in, like how to build a portfolio, how to um, maybe, how would you treat a loss, like when to take a loss, questions like that. I want to get back to some of those practical videos for you guys. Uh, so that we're really differentiated a little bit more because, of course, everybody, well, not everybody, but more and more persons are doing similar videos to what we're doing. So we want to kind of switch things up a little bit and cover some more of the topics that we think could be helpful for your day to day. So I have some videos planned. I'm going to see if I can get those out. And um, we're going to be maybe streamlining the stock reviews a little bit. And you know you have the stocks to watch, look forward to at the end of June. The earnings review will come out at the end of each earnings season like we have now. So I want to just kind of branch out the videos that we're doing. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for everything that you do to keep this community going. Really, really appreciate you guys. And um, I want to see you all at the monthly meeting end of the month last thursday at emancipation park at 6 30. so join us there um great great discussion we have there and everybody's welcome all right please do enjoy the rest of your day i'll see you in the very next video if you're watching on a replay just go ahead and watch another video for us right now